Friends, if you're looking for real old school laughs, you're in for a treat because we've got them right here. Flip City Magazine. Remember Mad Magazine? Then it went woke? Well, don't worry. Flip City has no chance of going woke. That's right. Four times a year, you'll get an actual printed magazine full of jokes, stories, comics, and more, all about today's pop culture, entertainment, and woke politics. Flip City takes terrible entertainment trends we love to hate with hilarious parodies of Lord of the Rings, Stranger Things, The Walking Dead, Star Trek, Hunters, and more. Trust me when I say there is nothing else like Flip City on the market. So subscribe today. It will be delivered in print, or you can even get it digitally if you're one of those wacky Zoomers. Either way, follow our link and sign up today, and if you put in midnight, you get an extra 10% off. Check out Flip City Magazine today. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time to take your seats and shake them! It's time for Toxic Femininity brought to you by Midnight. What's going on, everyone? This is Nita Infinity. Welcome to Midnight's Edge. This is Toxic Femininity on Midnight's Edge. <laughs> I'm usually with another co-host. His name is Tom Connors, but he's unwell tonight, and uh, I don't know if he's going to make it. I, I think he might be in La La Land, sleeping and trying to, uh, you know, dreaming about uh, g gamer girls and most likely big booby gamer girls because uh you know that's how that's how we all like them um but yeah oh, he's not here but i figured i'd go live and start the show because we've got some great guests tonight and some great panelists that given us given us their time and we've got a lot to cover so we're here we're here and we want to get into some of these topics so let's introduce the panel first tonight of course i have michelle a force of light here uh my regular co-host welcome back you were you were mia last week but welcome back yeah it's Bye. good to be back always always enjoy uh chatting up with you ladies and nice to have some special guests tonight Yay! And we also have our regular panelists here, my nerdy home, aka Stephanie. Hi, hi, hi. Looking forward hi, to hi. another great stream. Let's get it going. Yeah, awesome. And we have uh, the one, the only Mark Kern, aka Grums. What's going on, buddy? Hey, glad to be here. I am so pumped for this upcoming battle, legal battle. I just got off a stream with Ron Coleman, First Amendment attorney, and uh, WAD. It's 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 a doozy. We should talk about that, too. Oh, yeah. We're definitely going to talk about that. That was actually on the Valiant Renegade yeah. uh, stream, which we're going to be talking about. I was watching, and uh, of course, Valiant and WD Pro and everyone there. Uh, John of Trent uh, of Bounding into Comics. And of course, that Park Place. And now I didn't know that he was going there now. But um, all of you guys have my support and Midnight's Edge support. That's why we wanted to do this show and cover this big topic. Um, so, uh, but we have one more panelist to uh, to to get to here. We got Savvy here as well. Hi, Savvy. Hi, thank you for having me. Hi, of course. Welcome to the show. Um, I guess before we get started, let's kind of introduce everybody on their own and let, let everyone know uh, who they are. Uh, so Grums, uh, tell everyone who mm. you are first, just in case they don't they don't know who you are. Well, let's see. I'm a professional internet troll, according to my Wikipedia entry last time. Uh, but uh, you may know me from such games as Diablo, StarCraft, World of Warcraft, where I worked on all those projects with great teams. Uh, I was the team lead on World of Warcraft. I've been in the industry for a long time on billion-dollar franchises. I've worked at the sea level. I've sold companies. Uh, I've I've been in QA, so I've been top to bottom in the industry, and now I fight for the gamer. <laughs> oh. Yay. Hey, uh, so glad to have you on here. And uh, Savvy, how about you? G tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I am a former full-time streamer, uh, now a creative consultant. I help small companies with anything from branding to storytelling to community management. Uh, I'm also a full-time artist, and um, I am a Twitter troll and basement dwelling <laughs> otaku i guess <laughs> just an anime nerd 
<laughs> an appreciator um, of the jiggle physics. Oh my God. So am I, here. bro. Let's oh go. <laughs> we need more of that around. That's we all. Stellar blade. Oh my yeah. God. I want to talk about that. That That is going to be interesting. Uh, real quick, before we get into more stuff, uh, Cajun Corey sent in $5. So thank you for that. And Taylor Swift is overrated and eats boogers for $1.99. <laughs> $1. says, so Michelle, are you the jolly green giant? I um, I mean, that. maybe if I were green, I guess I am tall for a girl, but <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that, but thank you for the super <laughs> chat. Uh, so, okay, let's get into this. We got, um, and by the way, before we start too, like I did, I did message gothics. Vanessa is my girl. And she said uh, she can't, she may be able to make it tonight. So we don't know. She has the link. If she wants to co uh, come on, she will. Um, but it, she was kind of involved with this whole black girl gamer thing. And, and I guess I don't know where, I don't even know where to start because it's been such a huge, just debacle of like constantly keeping up with everything going on. So Mark, I guess, should we just do a TLDR? I mean, this kind of started with oh, Cabrutus, geez. you know, giving him, you know, uh, the whole sweet baby stuff. Do you want to give a little TLDR before we get into the black? Uh, so much history in just a few short weeks here. It all started off with a Brazilian gamer who goes by the name Cabrutus Rambo, who created a Steam curator list. And for those of you who don't know, a curator list is just a list of games that they recommend or don't recommend on Steam. And he created this list to point out games that Sweet Baby Inc., a consulting company in the game industry on story and characters, worked on and of course uh suicide squad being probably one of the most high profile games that they worked on that completely failed and many other titles on that list that um have failed or are about to fail and so sweet baby inc got so triggered by this that one of the <laughs> attempted to cancel him and not only ban his create his his curator group but also go after him personally and take away all his games and they tried to mass report him on steam and steam said nah -uh, he's doing nothing wrong here uh you're free to post games that you recommend and don't recommend and they went ballistic and as they read publicly on the internet the gamers uh, basically gathered in arms around him 350k strong now on the steam curator list and pushed back and that launched what is known as the meme wars 2 gamergate 2 electric boogaloo <laughs> that's a that's an amazing breakdown <laughs> michelle did you have something to say yes yeah, so because i am the total norby here on this subject so would it, this be accurate to say that this situation it is like if a movie critic posted a negative review and the studio freaked out and tried to remove the negative review, is that similar? It's 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 even more benign than that. His he didn't vol volunteer any opinion, good or bad, mm -hmm. on the game except to say a do not recommend it tag here. And the only information he posted was the actual Sweet Baby Inc. website credit that said that they're linked with this game. And so it was it was really probably far below that standard of a reviewer giving a bad review uh, in fact it was not that at all and they and they're basically their freak out and meltdown was so epic that they stry sanded themselves into internet fame mm -hmm. that's exactly what uh giga bear is pointing out here 20 dollars stry sand effect gets you every time thank you so much for that generous super chat there um, but man, and then from there, it just, it just kept getting like, it just escalated more quickly and more quickly. It just, and it just, it was weird because at that point, all of the, you know, um, gamer jur journalists, <laughs> journalists, they all started hopping on board and being like, well, what's going on here? And that's the Gamergate too. Let's, uh, let's talk about this and let's demonize these gamers and start, uh, you know, talking about how they're so racist and sexist and all of this stuff. And Savvy, I think you had a couple back and forth with these game developers. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? <laughs> Oh, gosh. Um, yeah. So the whole thing that started for me was uh, Dr. Cowart putting out her take this thing. So I couldn't let go that randomly on their website that they said that they were funded by the DHS. So that's how I got involved. Mm -hmm. But my big thing on Twitter is just asking questions and for people to just explain themselves. And I got into a very funny back and forth or not. He didn't even join in. I just asked questions and then other developers or other people 
someone from Bungie, I think, tried to answer for him. Um, the the writer from Borderlands 3 put out a hot take about what you can and can't write. And I, I don't know. There's a lot of just dumb opinions. And then I ask them to expound. And then they don't respond. But then when they do, they have to private their accounts. Or block um, you. I mean, I've had. Uh, yeah, I get blocked that? a bit. <laughs> who is that woman Alyssa Mercante or what, whoever the one Alyssa that, Mercante. Alyssa. yeah her I I didn't even know who she I was like you know kind of staying away from all that because there was so much going on but I you know isn't obviously that, isn't yeah. that fiance right now yes it I'm is talking about it, my wife <laughs> that's right <laughs> I didn't even what? know her I was like I don't know who, uh, who this person is and I went to check out her profile and I was like Oh wait, I'm I'm blocked. Um, but <laughs> Grounds, he's been uh he's been meeting Save the date. <laughs> there, <laughs> your wife is stunning. She was stunning she was so brave. she was We're so very offended. Happy. People say we look related. <laughs> <laughs> when she when she quote tweeted you, she was so offended that you didn't include an actual date. She was, you know, I think oh it's just God. nerves. Every every bride goes through this. Please cut her some slack. <laughs> it's a very very emotional moment. There was there was one that was really funny. It was like you guys look like each other. Where is that one? I'm trying to I'm trying to find that one. Where it was like <laughs> oh, I think it's on my feed. I think I retweeted it, so it might be under replies or something. It's like gonna that. be in the yeah. It's gonna be in here. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Uh, I was like dying at this one because I'm like, oh my god, you kind you almost do a little bit look alike. It's it's weird. Now I can't unsee it. Uh, here it is. I think it's the glasses. <laughs> it's the glasses and the and the jaw. She's got your 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 strong jaw there. <laughs> Very strong jaw. Oh my god! I I gotta love yep. the internet, man. Um. So yes, this is what this is what the journalists do. Uh, of course, they have to go where. Uh, you know, the, the virtue signals the loudest uh, and all that stuff, and then, you know. All of this stuff happens and then enter uh, black girl gamers uh, where they they saw that park place write an article about them and about their uh, consulting practices. Uh, and then they decided uh, they're going to send a cease and desist letter to that park place. Uh, and that's where Mark was right now talking to talking to Valiant and them about about this very topic. Correct. Oh, yeah, it, it's a cluster. I mean, so it, basically, uh, that park place is a gaming website that covered the news uh, of uh, black girl gamers hiring tweet where they tweeted out that they were looking for black women creators for possible opportunities in uh, D&D. Uh, promoting the brand and things like that. And so they 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 put out an article that said, uh, I think it says it right there, it appears to be against, you know, non-discriminatory hiring practices or something like this. Well, they took mm -hmm. issue with this and they publicly went out and tweeted uh, before this letter went out that they were going to go after not just that park place for defaming them about their hiring practices, which they claimed were readily available on the internet and <laughs> contrary to his claims. Uh, but they also threatened everybody on the internet who be, who would dare link or talk about the article at all? Everybody. So we're oh, all sorry, on the list. Sorry, on Andre. List. You're on a list. Everybody's on a list. Sorry, Andre. By the way, Andre is the guy that owns this channel. Uh, you are now on a list because we're going to be talking about that, Andre. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, your channel is in danger. It's un Midnight's Edge is going to be under attack, people. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, this is, this is crazy to me because I mean, there's just so much going on with, with regards to this being in America, especially, uh, there's, this, there's such thing as free speech. Uh, people can say and write, uh, articles, especially journalists are supposed to have like, you know, freedom to express freedom themselves, the freedom of the press. Exactly. Uh, so where is that? <laughs> like what, what is going on here? Uh, this is unbelievable. And then, of course, Valiant did just release the uh, the said statement. Uh, here it oh, is. Yeah, they got serious, and uh, they're, you know they're based in the UK, but they they hired a lawyer in Virginia to draft up this uh, this quite laughable cease and desist, which uh, you know Ron says uh, goes farther than anything he's ever seen. Wow. Uh, here, let's take a closer look at this here, uh, because that page that I opened was tiny. Okay, here we go. 
so this is to John F. Trent, which is, uh, you may be familiar with him. He's from Bounding Into Comics. Uh, and it says here, uh, please advise that our firm has been retained by Ms. J. Ann Lopez, CEO of Black Girl Gamers. Um, whatever this means. As you know, Ms. Ms. Lopez and BGG are well known in the gaming community. Our firm was retained because Ms. Lopez observed a series of unwarranted and defamatory attacks against her character and reputation made by you and various online com <laughs> commentators. Oh, shit. Sorry. Um, who follow or share your views. These, these false, unwarranted, and defamatory attacks are also direct, uh, directed at BGG. Additionally, Ms. Lopez observed that you've publicly used her name, image, and likeness without her prior authorization on your website. Wait, aren't, isn't that like the weirdest thing to complain about? Because when you're a public person, like that, all that kind of stuff is like... These are publicly available images. These, and, and Exactly. Who, and, yeah, they're publicly available. I don't think that you can, you know, get upset or have... or You, you don't need permission to use publicly available information exactly that's such a bizarre i mean i i have like you know very minimal law knowledge and i know even i know that uh we demand that you immediately ce cease and desist from posting our dis or displaying mm -hmm. any videos and our comments about ms lopez and bgg we demand that by april 5th 2024 you remove any and all links and references to videos, i.e. YouTube and Twitch, that comments upon or visually depicts Miss Lopez and or the BGG brand. Videos, commentary, and co uh, comments posted oh. online. Mm -hmm. Can we pause right there? I just sure. want to highlight this, this part that they decided to put in bold letters and underline. Mm -hmm. It's not just that they want the statement or the claimed mm -hmm. false allegation taken down. They don't want anybody to talk about them at all. You can't yeah. even mention their name without their permission, according mm -hmm. to this letter. That is how chilling this is on free speech. And this is why it's the most ridiculous, overbroad cease and desist I've ever seen. I mean, this is like, again, this is kind of next level, especially when you realize that they're they're sending this to a journalist. <laughs> so this, again, freedom of the press, freedom of speech. There's so much going on here that they're like, we don't want you to talk about anything of us ever. Don't even use our you know publicly available images <laughs> that we've made ourselves publicly available yeah they're not asking for a simple detraction you know no. or a clarification statement or anything like that this is just do not post anything do not display images do not post our uh our links our references nothing our brand image absolutely nothing yeah you can't that's have anything I was laughing when Valiant akin it to like basically like Will Smith being like, keep your, my wife's name out your fucking mouth. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly what's going <laughs> that was a great on. Clip. This, is, this is like Will Smith going up freaking slapping Chris Rock in the face uh, for this very reason. This is so crazy. Uh, so this goes on to say video commentary and comments posted online that attacks Miss Lopez's moral character and accuses her of BGG of, uh, and BGG of engaging engaging in unlawful and discriminatory hiring and retention practices are hurtful, baseless, and defamatory. The how, accusation is it, how is it baseless when they have proof? It's evidence. The article is not baseless. It's based on something that they tweeted out. In their words that's on their website. Oh, yeah, they got they got the screenshot of the tweet right there. Did, did, the, I wonder if like up. did the lawyer just say, Hey, I'm gonna take your word on this? They didn't look into anything. <laughs> that's I think the called. lawyer just said, uh, I'll take your money. <laughs> yeah, in Agreed. Virginia, you don't have to go to law school, you can just take the bar. I've actually thought about doing it a number of times for giggles. So this oh just gosh. reads like somebody who's never been to law school. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i you know i just heard that they did that in washington uh that mm -hmm. they, they're passing a law where you can just pass the bar you don't have to go to law school mm -hmm. um video commentary okay so we we read that part these defamation public uh public ac these defamatory public accusations have resulted in racist sexist and misogynistic <laughs> communications directed at Ms. Lopez and BGG's public brand. Look. Oh, my gosh. This is the stuff that always reminds me of, like, what Disney and them do. Like, when they're like, oh, look, we have a black uh, we have a black Jedi now, guys. Uh, just <laughs> FYI, everyone's going to be racist towards them, though. You know, our show hasn't even started. Um, 
this is the kind of stuff that really bugs me because it's like, okay, even though I understand that there's a lot of crazy people on online, not one specific place like Midnight's Edge or anywhere else is basically responsible for what crazy people do on the internet. Like we, we, we here at Midnight's Edge do not advise you go harassing anybody, anybody, uh, let alone anyone from be uh, black girl gamers or anybody ever. Uh, so and no matter how many times you say that, uh, yet again, time and time again, you'll hear these kind of things like, you know, kind of baseless accusations here being thrown around uh, that they they have been subjugated to now because of because of their article uh, to, to sexism, uh, misogynistic communications and racism and all of this uh, other kind of stuff. Uh, and it, it's, what they're saying they're like it, it's right. They're saying racist things. Well, the the things that they're saying and reporting on are your racist practices. It's <laughs> sexist because it's being written by a man, and it's misogynistic because it's being written by a man and being reported by a man. And like all of these channels and YouTube videos are picking it up and also running with the story. And because they are men, now it's and because they're white men mostly that are reporting on it, it's racist, sexist, and misogynistic. But you're they're reporting on your racist practices. So it's like, they're saying like, nah, you're the racist one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, so then these defamatory public accusation files also resulted in various communications director, Ms. Lopez, threatening violence against her person and co uh, company re resulting in a law enforcement referral. Uh, I mean, that's easily provable if she's- Yeah, I'd like to see that. Police, mm -hmm. Yeah, a, a police report. Uh, would like to see that as well. These reprehensible comments and video posts have damaged Ms. Lopez's personal reputation and placed her in a reasonable fear of bodily harm. That's never oh cool. God, fearing for her life. That's just as terrible. a result of her actions, though. That's <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's unfortunately pe people do get death threats. I've gotten death threats. I, I just got one today. Uh, yeah. And yeah. normally they're spurious, but it's a very serious thing. And so one thing that, that I always say is like, hey, don't don't go out and harass anybody, right? Mm -mm. Uh, but one thing I, I pointed out in the last stream was we always say that. We always say don't go harass these people, but they never do. I've mm -hmm. never heard, you know, any any reporter who's covered this from PC Gamer or Kotaku ever say anything similarly. In fact, they go out of their way to sort of like, you know, uh, set the dogs loose on you. They they kind of encourage it, not 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 uh, death threats or anything, but they encourage harassment. Mm -hmm. You know, they encourage false flagging. They encourage reporting mm -hmm. uh, of people's accounts. They encourage like cancel culture. Like that's literally yeah, they, what cancel culture it. is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're like, hey guys, can you please go report this? Report this. They encourage that type of behavior. Um, Whereas, you know, we don't, we're like, don't, don't go out of your way. I don't want them to have any ammunition on us or whatever, you know, so people will tell that we will tell the audience, don't go harassing these people. You know, they're already making shit up. They're already. Uh, well, and I think that's the one of the reasons is because most of the time we have the truth on our side. We don't need to fuck around and be like, oh, yeah, like, oh, like you, you guys should go and harass these people. Like, no, that's not what we're like. We would never say that because we don't need to say stuff like that. We have mm -hmm. facts and truth on our side and they will stand out by, by themselves. And that's why I keep saying with savvy, like they just, the people that, you know, you talk to constantly on YouTube or I mean on, on Twitter, they're constantly sticking their foot in their mouth and we just sit there, sit and watch and eat popcorn and let them destroy each other and themselves. It's, it's kind of crazy. Um, so then this goes on to say the accusation, uh, that if the defamatory public accusations have also resulted in various communications directed, uh, Ms. Lopez threatening violence against her person, the company resulting in law enforcement referral that we read that blah, blah, blah. Uh, so yeah, don't harm her. Please note that this law firm does not attempt to, res uh, restrict legitimate free speech, but <laughs> What kind of, sorry. you're really contradicting yourself. Kind what of are you about? Don't talk you about us at all. We love free speech. <laughs> what I the fuck? fuck? Do not because post they're... anything. You refrain from using anything. In, in fact, take down everything. And if you ever mention her name or her company, 
We're coming after you. But we absolutely 100% love free speech. Oh, like, my God. Is this one of those things where they're actually scared now that they may be sued themselves for attempting to stop people's free speech? Like, is this- I, I'll tell you what I think is going on here. Um, I, I think that they were they were very triggered by the um, their sudden visibility on the Internet, which uh, they basically, you know, uh, self-created and they right. they are trying to get people they, they, they tried to virtue signal and now it, it backfired and they're trying to get people to shut up and so what they did is they because there were many people talking about this right but who mm-hmm. did they pick they picked that park place and if you pull up their website real quick uh mm-hmm. you'll see maybe why yeah. they picked that park place and um i'll just say that they're going through a revamp right now uh, for their website, they're doing a. Uh, they announced on stream they're doing a relaunch, and uh, that's they've been working on for three months. But if you look at this site, I mean, uh, all due respect, it's kind of basic, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I think they looked at this and they said, "Ah, well, we want everyone to shut up. Let's pick what we think is a really easy target mm-hmm. and go mm-hmm. after them, make an example." And then everyone will shut up. That's their strategy here. And it's actually a a pretty common legal strategy. When you do patent lawsuits, for example, you go after the low-hanging fruit so you can build up some decisions. And then you go after the Microsofts and everybody else. So I think that's what happened here. And it massively backfired on them because that park place turned around and they enlisted Ron Coleman as their Mm -hmm. attorney, who is a very prominent attorney on Twitter. I think over 300,000 followers uh, basically has had, you know, First Amendment cases that have been cited by the Supreme Court, a very instrumental uh, attorney in this space. And oh boy, I bet they regret that again. <laughs> I know yeah, this is so absolutely. It, it does seem that way that they chose that park place as an easy target. You see a lot of a lot of people doing this when they feel like, you know, they have, I guess, like, for lack of better terms, like the power on their side, you know, they have a reputation on their side and they look at this tiny little site and they're like, hmm, we can just take them down. Right. Yeah. We'll take them down and other people will follow suit. You know, they'll mm-hmm. stop talking about it because this place uh, got sued. So we don't want to talk about it because what if what if they come after us? Mm-hmm. You know, so but, you what's know, interesting, too, I'm um, I'm on the lawyers website, actually, and just briefly going through all of their reviews. I don't know why they would pick these people. Because obviously you want a law firm that specializes in the thing that you're trying to do. The thing that they handle is family problems, custody battles, and accusations for crimes. Uh, I think traffic, too. Uh, Yeah. I'm just... I I wonder if... I I don't know. They probably either... They they probably probably used them before, maybe. Yeah, they they probably either know them from previous use or just someone at that group knows someone at this group or... It's kind of like we said, maybe it was such a weak case, like that was the only one they could get to actually do it. I don't know, because I don't really see how any... This was seri- on a budget. Yeah, I don't yeah, see, no, I don't see how any budget. serious lawyer would look at this and think they had a shot in winning. No, and if you just do a quick, quick Google search too on them, they come up with very good reviews, but it's very small number of reviews. Mm. So they probably just looked up budget lawyer. Well, it, not trying to be mean, but no, but it even is. if, but that's the thing though, like most lawyers that know what's going on with this kind of lawsuit would immediately tell them that you're like, you will, you are infringing on people's free speech. Yeah. So you could be, you know, you could be liable for this as well. So if mm-hmm. they didn't have this lawyer actually say that to them and then actually draft that letter that we're just reading right now and say like, by the way, <laughs> we're not infringing upon anyone's free speech while we're telling you to go fuck yourselves and like, you know, not talk about us. Um, this is bizarre. This is a bizarre thing to write uh, within the same letter. You know what I'm saying? Because in the first yeah, that paragraphs, doesn't make any sense. Well, I here, mean, here's what I think happened too. I think you guys are so right about them picking what they deemed low bearing, fr- low hanging fruit. I think they thought that just one letter, a cease and desist from any attorney, would may mm-hmm. be enough to make this what they deem this little YouTube channel just stop. Mm -hmm. maybe it was almost and then and then they called their bluff and got a better attorney like like it really might have been like a game of poker situation like if we just get a cease and desist letter sent officially by an attorney maybe they'll they'll give in they'll they'll be scared they're the little guy and they'll just quit Mm -hmm. yeah they've got a a two of spades and a jack of hearts there and they're just trying to say all in 
Let's yeah. go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the, to continue with this, it says, uh, and we believe the internet is an important medium for uh, disse- what? Uh, dissemination of accurate yes. and thank you, thank you, uh, of acu- accurate and truthful information, and for the uh, for fair comment on issues of interest. However, the defamatory comments made by you unlawfully approach upon our clients' rights. Uh, so shut up that park place. Uh, hang on this one more page here. Uh, this is the final page. Uh, this letter puts us uh, all on notice that uh, that should there be further defam- defamatory comments about Ms. Lopez and BGG, we will have no choice but to recommend that our client pursue all legal causes of action, including filing of a lawsuit to protect their her interest. We will pursue both monetary damages and attorney's fees costs incurred by our yeah, client as a result of the legal actions, blah, 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 uh, and so on and so forth. There you go. That's stuff. Who, who's the lawyer at the bottom that signed it? Um, it was Diallo K. Morris. Okay. Uh, let me, let me learn, bring it up. I again. think there's three attorneys at the firm. Three there's partners. three attorneys and he's mm-hmm. the, yeah. Diallo K. Morris is the one that uh, that signed it. Um, hello, Tom. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> hey, Tom. Hi. How you doing? Uh, we're just in the middle of this uh, crazy lawsuit that we were reading. Let me um, stop you. No, it's crazy. Uh, it's it's just been a crazy, crazy thing. Now, meanwhile, guys. Meanwhile. Uh, The crusade hasn't stopped because um, this happened to actually on Saturday night because, Tom, you were there, too. Tom and uh, Savvy and Grums were all on Flashcast with Gothics, uh, a.k.a. Vanessa. And she was part of Black Girl Gamers, from what I understand. Um, And uh, at the same time as this was going on, they basically came out and said, because she she came out and basically said, like, I was part of this group. And I know this because I also actually watched her documentary and they were part of the documentary that she talked about being, you know, in the Twitch, at the Twitch crowd and all this stuff and how uh, she was part of that group that went after her after the whole Little Mermaid fiasco and right. debacle. Um, so when all of that kind of stuff happened, then she left the, the that group. And so she was talking about it on Flashcast. Uh, and then a few days after, or like I think the day later, uh, the the Black Girl Gamers came out and put this giant I, it was 30, such a long thread. three yeah. posts. Uh, we're not going to read it. 33. Uh, 30, there's two of them. There's over 9,000. <laughs> right. There, there is a part two. Yeah. It's so much fun. <laughs> There is a part two of this 33 page thing. What the frig? I I only ate, I only read this one and I'm not going to read it to you guys now. Oh yeah, there is. Holy shit. That's mm-hmm. right. There is a another That's right. There we go. I didn't even um, click on it. How many more is it? Is it an additional It's wow. an additional like 10 or 15 pages. I mean, it's all it, I read the whole bro. thing actually cuz it's 28 out of 33. So looking at that thread, I can tell you that their attorney did not review that because if you're in the middle of, you know, going (laughs) after someone for defamation, the Mm -hmm. thing you don't want to do is turn around and try to defame someone else. Exactly. (laughs) No one has reviewed this. The buck stopped right at the letter. They're like, ah, we spent a grand. We can't spend any more. Yeah, it's it's nuts. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, if you if you look at the DMs too. So like what I do whenever anybody leaks DMs, you instantly stop reading whatever they wrote and just read the DMs. Because that's all the context that you need. That's so not the there's DMs. there's a no no, so there's a part with the uh the Discord um DM, it's further down, but they post the message where um Gothics basically says, "Hey, I'm going to leave." Oh yeah, that They one. made her look like the most level-headed individual by posting that. They were so damn stupid. Mm-hmm. They shot themselves in the foot royally because not only is she kind and courteous, I, I mean, she's she's bloody professional in this. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I just want to give you a courtesy and let you know that I left cookout. I was watching some of the comments in the stream and it's clear that I'm not wanted. Thank you for being a clear leader. 
but I don't think it's a good fit for me anymore. That's what, <laughs> that's what she said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, How horrible. I mean, she's terrible, a terrible person. person. Uh, oh, and then, oh, and then a, after and then this. a whole letter after that. After this, that. by the way, a lot of them have gone after her again now. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of them that are like harassing her and mm -hmm. calling her ugly and like just going after her looks and like all of this stuff. The stuff that they're saying that we do. Mm -hmm. uh, they're doing that to Vanessa right now as we speak. Yep. I, I'm sure um, they're that's their MO. That's their what they do. community. They have a lot of Twitch streamers. And if, if you look at, uh, you know, after I talked about them, the, the people that were sent my way, uh, a lot of small Twitch streamers who, uh, you know, uh, you know, might have been part of this network. I have no idea, but they're pretty plugged into that. And, it, and the timing was pretty coincidental. It's it's all of the timing is pretty freaking nuts. Uh, now, now Vanessa has stated that she is going to respond to this at some point because she is aware of this threat. So I'm not obviously I'm not going to uh, talk about uh, that. Uh, I'm I'm patiently waiting for her beautiful response, which I'm 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 sure is going to be amazing. Um, so, uh, definitely make sure you're, you're subscribed to gothics on Twitter and on, on her, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, cause I'm sure she's going to have some spicy stuff for us in the, in the coming days. Uh, real quick. I want to get the super chat here from giga bear for $20. So generous. Thank you. Says I'll take fair use for a thousand dollars, Alex. Uh, very true here. And we also had 16 bit mascot here. What a great panel tonight. Cheers to you, ladies. And I guess uh, also the other guy, Kale. <laughs> Toxic. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hi, Tom. Tom. Hi. Uh, we miss you, Tom. I feel like I, it, it, it was weird to start the show without you. Um, War Machine just gifted five Midnight's Edge memberships. Thank you so much. And before that, Psychotic Mongoose gifted one membership. So thank you so much for that. Um, and, uh, so let's get into some of this other conversation surrounding what's going on with, uh, with gaming in general, because honestly, as a gamer, uh, Mark and everyone here, I have just, I I've had it. I've had enough of this kind of stuff. Let me, let me just, you know, a, a picture is going to say a thousand words here. I'm over it. Okay. I'm over. Oh, this this character design, <laughs> just stop it, okay? I'm just, I'm done. I'm That's done. The with ideal this woman. Shit. How dare you lambast the ideal woman? I swear, oh. That's disgusting. I can't do it anymore, man. And then, like you know, these guys coming out here with game character AIs and doing it a thousand times better than what we are supposed to get in the actual gaming. I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it. And this is just the absolute bare minimum of what's going on because it's not just about you know what the character looks like it's also about what they're saying during the games and the stories and where they're going and how much uh, of the message you're getting in all of these video games so mark do you want to kind of comment on what's going on with dei and all of these messed up practices that are giving us these kind of results this well i i think you know i i've been talking to a lot of uh of my contacts and friends in the industry and um you know i have i have some pretty unique insight because not only do i have friends at the developer level uh i have them at the c level and i don't mean the ceo of just some small studio i'm talking about public companies and uh and very large uh fundraising efforts so what you have to understand is uh esg and dei were, were requirements to get any sort of funding or to even list your company uh, back during the pandemic era, then and that was there was a big focus by uh, BlackRock and others to sort of impose these standards um, in media, and that you know how do you how do you qualify for these scores? And I'm going to be having a Twitter thread about this next week with some infographics. Uh, I love but, your Twitter threads, by the way. <laughs> oh, thank you. And um, and so, you know, what you can do is um, these companies are raising a lot of money. Like, you know, we're talking about $100 million credit lines. And if you can knock half a percent off of your interest rate for these credit lines, you're going to save hundreds of thousands of dollars. And if you go around and you hire someone like Sweet Baby Inc., or uh, I believe it's publicly disclo disclosed that Black Girl Gamers on Forspoken charged 90 grand or something that was mentioned on the last stream. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I spend 90 grand. And I save half a million bucks. Okay. Uh, or 
you know, I check all the boxes that say uh, I hired this gender balancing firm to, to review my recruiting policies. That's another box check. Then you go and you take that data and you go to the mm -hmm. credit agencies, giant credit agencies. We're talking Moody, all these other guys, right? And you say, mm -hmm. look, look, look what we've done. We qualify now for lower interest rates we, uh, or we qualify now for uh, an investment because some investors required this too. That's what drove all of this. And you had another factor where once you got the money and entertainment was so hot during the pandemic because everyone was stuck at home, you had to expand your staff. You had to pump out more games and in case of television, more, more movies and, and more Netflix specials. Uh, so you had to hire and everyone, there was a, there was a wage increase too because of you know inflation. So there was, the competition was fierce and they needed bodies and they needed bodies that would check off these boxes to get them more cheap loans. And so this, uh, you had an influx of activists at this point. So you had pressure from the top down and then you had pressure from the bottom up and that created the perfect storm to give you the ideal woman that you see on your screen. right now. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I, know, so I, know. Just, I just saw that like, you know, what was it? There was an article that Mark Microsoft was, uh, as sick of having what curvy women in video games or something yep, like they, that they said no no does your character have gender barriers when referencing female characters and that was wild <sighs> very wild All right, for the ladies on the panel do, do, do curvy women in your video games exclude you from gaming no they no. make me they they inspire me like I, I every artist curves. around the world is is inspired by these beautiful characters samus zelda and mm -hmm. uh some of the others are the most drawn women on the internet <laughs> like come on like mm -hmm. do you know what's funny though because me as a woman it, it took me probably just a few seconds ago to actually recognize the difference in the uh, chess region of this character <laughs> um, because as a woman my face just went to her face her and face like, that's where i went to yeah man, it's like god have mercy on that woman's soul like like she like that is one of the ugliest women i think that's ever been like i'm pretty yeah. sure that that was a dude that made that character it was like a self-insert of a dude i was gonna say she looks like that's something out of the shrek world but but no the shrek people are way more attractive <laughs> they are they are even even fiona was beautiful as an ogre mm -hmm. like what the hell but i want to add too onto what grums was saying so i first came across the concept of the esg stuff actually through through publications i was looking into how to how to release your own book for a while and back in i think 2014 or 2015 in order to publish through a company they actually require you now to go through a sensitivity reader. And oh, I looked God. into that because I was like, what the, what the fuck is that? And I thought, okay, you know, if they're telling me, let's say I wrote a blacksmithing character, uh, did I do something wrong with the blacksmithing um, that I'm trying to describe? No, they don't care about that. They're going to tell you, you can't use the word fat because that might upset somebody. Oh, do you have a period piece set in the 1800s? Well, you can't use any of the language from there because mm -hmm. that's not for modern audiences. Mm -hmm. And so that was the first time I really kind of came came across this whole concept because I was like, why, why are they doing this? But it's the loans, it's the money, it's all of that. And they're just keep weaseling that in. You were 100% on point because the first time that I came across of it as well, this is way before I started YouTubing, was the writing community and mm -hmm. the, and and publishing. And that's exactly where I, I was like, wait, what is going on here? Because there was people, there was writers that were getting canceled on Twitter at the time. It was still Twitter. This was many mm -hmm. years ago. And they were part of the writing community. And if they had written a book, that was a time period piece. Let's say it was set in the 80s and one of the characters was being teased and somebody called them the F word or the N word or whatever, that they were getting canceled for writing that in their book. It was wild. And people were saying like, don't buy this book. Don't support this writer. They need to be canceled. And I'm like, what has happened to publishing and just writing in general? It, it was the most bizarre thing. And then, you know, I started to see it in movies and eventually and video games. There. I know it's it's it yeah. is the woke mind virus. It is absolutely a virus. It is spreading and it needs to be stopped. Um, now, one of the people that is, you know, stopping it and holding fast and God bless them all, is Japan. Uh, so thank God 
Uh, here's uh, Stellar Blade, uh, the character creators. Stellar Blade and what they're doing. Setting up their their characters. That's freaking amazing. I lo I love that. Yeah, yeah Japan and Korea are holding holding the line strong and they you can tell too that they have more creative freedom than the West does because their stories are so much better as a whole. And the other thing that I, I rail against really hard is localization, the ones that go and change thing or remove culture. Uh, I always joke that I never healed from the jelly donut incident from Pokemon way back when I was seven years old. <laughs> <laughs> And that's because I tried to put grape jelly into rice, thinking that's what they ate. <laughs> that's what they call the donut. But no, no. So, so that was the first time I ever saw it. And then that's when I started watching Japanese anime instead of watching it um, uh, dubbed. But I, I hate that. I hate it so much. And I think that localization needs to go because all those people are basically telling you is, oh, America can't handle another culture. Oh, the, they'll never go to the Internet and look up what it means to do X, Y, Z or what this food is. Mm. It's just baffling. Like localization to me is racism. Yeah, I don't it, know. It's weird. It, it is definitely it's, weird. It's sad. Now, I, I made uh, uh, the mistake of saying Japan. Mind you, Japan's also holding out the, down the line for the most part as well. So this mm -hmm. was Korean. Uh, Mark, do you have any any comments to, to say about Stellar Blade or what's going on over there with their game? Yeah, I, I, well, it's it's a game coming out of South Korea. And uh, I think one tweet that I made point, you know, highlights the fact that the uh, they were saying, uh, I think it was IGN France that was saying that uh, th the creator has obviously never seen a living real woman before. And I tweeted out, it's like, well, you can actually see that uh, not only is the model real that they scanned as a reference, but that uh, one of the lead artists on the team, uh, she's married to the creator and she's very beautiful herself. And these are the people directly creating this. And it's the same thing they said about Bayonetta. And they tried to claim that, oh, we love Bayonetta, but they really hated Bayonetta. And they, they hated Bayonetta. They wanted to cancel her so oh. hard. They were like, and oh, they, she's and they said, too yeah. busty and all this stuff. Made for the male gaze by a male gamer. But it was a woman who created Bayonetta. So mm -hmm. that was interesting. Yeah, it was it, oh. it was wild. I remember when I was working at Nintendo and they were like, it was a constant like Bayonetta got so much hate. It was bad. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, the other thing is, uh, you know, uh, when it, it, there used to be a defense, there, there, there was a thread on Twitter maybe a couple months ago that was talking about why are Western AAA game characters, uh, females in particular, so badly scanned, right? And so mm -hmm. they would show that, yeah, they would show the actress and the photo scan of the actress and they'd show the end result and obviously things had been altered. And, mm -hmm. you know, and and they and there was all these people coming out and and carrying water for these the, the woke agenda saying, no, 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 it's just too technical, you wouldn't understand it. There are barriers, you see, during the scanning <laughs> process that results in such imperfections but you don't find these in the male characters and you don't find them in south korean games you don't find them in stellar blade so what is going on why were they british you sounded british there I was yeah, like, <laughs> well, I, you know I, I grew up in singapore and i had a british accent when i was a kid fun fact oh they, they, that's why i was coming out. yeah horizon forbidden west is a perfect example of that um, same with like Mary Jane from the new Spider-Man game. Like she, like the actress for that game looks great. And then they made her look like a man. Like, I don't know. I don't know what's up with this jawline situation where they just have to make everyone oh. look like a man. Like it's Pokemon it's go. They just changed their, their, uh, female trainer avatar. And instantly you can see the jawline. I don't know why it's always the jawline. Oh my God! Let's it's the jawline, the hips, and the arms. They actually made them anatomically incorrect. If you look at the bone structure and the way that she stands, it's not correct for a female at all. And uh, I recently found out that Niantic has, in fact, partnered with a group called Gamer X G A Y M E R, and they push that kind of stuff. So I am attempting to reach out to to Niantic. Um, I'm trying to see if I have any contacts too. And if I can find some public information that proves that they're pushing for that stuff, then I'm going to be able to, you know, write about it and all that. But that would be the closest I've come across a DEI style thing getting to Pokemon. And it might explain some of their other changes as well. Um, does anyone have uh, the 
the um yeah uh, stephanie you're you're muted you're muted girl my bad that's what i was about to say like it look it's it looks like they're trying to make the female characters trans like they look trans yeah they Gender do barriers I, yeah that, it's um that's something that i think either endymion uh or upper echelon i forget who did the video that said that they had direct contacts on the last of us that said that the uh, the reason they changed the characters was to appeal to the trans gaze. And, um, you know, I don't I don't know if that's true. I have not verified that at all. But if you look at all the characters and how they make them, you know, somewhat masculine, it's like may maybe there, yeah. there's something to that. Um, do you guys by any chance have like the picture for this uh, Pokemon Go character? That I got you. About? Oh, perfect. Right but it's, it's a meme one, but you know, you, you can tell like nice. when a character has less hip than I do, and I don't have big hips at all. Like when I feel more feminine than a fictional character, there is a damn problem. <laughs> what the oh. hell is this? Wow. It's wrong. That's what it is. They Who made the males like more this? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the the women do not stand like women anymore, and then the no. the males are more twinky and anemic, and it's very very odd. Wait, the one on the far right is a guy. Uh, the far left is a guy. The, the far right is a, is a girl. Oh, this is supposed to be a girl. I was confused. Like, yeah. a, I'm not gonna lie. It looks like she's got a bulge in her. That's yeah. That's yeah. That's I don't know what with guy. I totally thought yeah. this was a dude at first too. Yeah, it looks like she's got a bulge going. Yeah, I on. thought the two in the middle. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to. Interrupt. I thought the two in the middle were girls, and the two on the right were guys. Nope, there's well, three they girls all and look one like guy. dudes. Okay, because I, I sent mean, you another like... link: the before and after. Okay, hold on. And man, see. that that dude's body. I mean, that's really something to. <laughs> I know. Sure, no, sorry, I do. <laughs> Guys, I know you feel cheated, but I feel cheated with that. So, oh my god, okay, oh my god, this is so even worse. Sad. Hold on, let's see this one. Oh my that god, that one's probably the more popular one that was going around. Yep, yep. <gasps> oh. What the frig? Why? I mean, I say I always say this. Why are they doing this? But it's just like we all know why they're doing this. What I mean, is the trans gaze? I mean, seriously, like, how do they know what trans people want? Like, I would think most trans men. Oh, the I'm sorry, those shorts. Look, it looks like there's a butt. Like, <laughs> and I'm sorry if more trans people were dating other like trans people, that I wouldn't keep getting shamed into dating trans people. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is wild. Yeah. I mean, there's literally like no definition. This person has the gorilla, the arms longest of, arms, and look I've at them. The hands are huge. I mean, this is, I mean, what the fuck's going on with the hands? Uh, they changed the shorts. The waist, the, <laughs> yeah. shorts. the shorts. It looks like a front butt. It looks like it's, it does. You know, in space balls, when like his head is on backwards and he's like, <laughs> yeah. he's his ass. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Yeah. I, mean, uh, I used to love that game. There's no fucking waist. Like she's like, this is like she's got a waist going on. This she looks like feminine. And it's not even excessive. It's a normal waist. Like my waist, again, mm -hmm. I joke that I'm built like a 12-year-old boy. And that that's not that much of a waist right there, you know? Like no. there was nothing wrong with the previous there's, model. No. no, there's nothing oh. wrong with the previous model. Now Shit. there are other games. Um, the Pokemon Unite, which is the the MOBA, their characters are still cute. They're still, you know, feminine, but for how long? You know what's you know what's gonna bug me about this mainly is a lot of people, a lot of weirdos like the SJW types will be like, well, why are you trying to fap to her? Like it's that that whole thing always gets me because I'm like, dude, it's nobody's upsetting. trying. To, it's very upsetting. It's like nobody's trying to fap to the freaking things. We just like having cute characters. Like it's like, yep. I'm not freaking fapping to no cartoon. That's the weirdest shit I've ever heard in my life. But hey, now, wait, wait, wait a, a second. second. <laughs> they, keep, they keep complaining about the male gaze, and now they're trying to cater to the trans gaze. Is yeah, that, but Which isn't is it still the, the male same, gaze? That's what I'm the trying same to figure gaze. Out what the I was hell just is about. To, isn't that the same gaze? <laughs> <laughs> It's the same damn thing, and it's so frustrating. 
<laughs> I feel like Tom is sitting there with like, you know, that gif of the I chick know, that's trying to figure reason. out like the math equation and she's yes. just trying to figure that shit out. Like, what the fuck <laughs> is the trans gaze? Like somebody needs to do a meme of that because that's funny. Um, real quick, let me get this uh, very uh, uh, generous super chat. Thank you, Retro Meister, for $20. Says, to Savvy's point, she made about how the uh, WEF are involved in gaming. I've been trying to warn my, fr uh, warn my friends about uh, this for years, yet they didn't believe it and labeled me a conspiracy theorist. I guess the joke's on them now. So I want to clarify that. I haven't directly tied the WEF into having immediate action. The reference of the WEF was brought up because of RUSI, R-U-S-I, the Royal United something Institute, Service Institute. It's UK's largest and oldest think tank. They have access to the WEF and many of the current employees who are part of the ERG, uh, yeah, the extremist and uh, extremist research and gaming network, they work for Russi. Russi also states on the website that they co-founded uh, the EGRN, which the, EGR, uh, the EGRN on their website don't say that at all, of course. Wow. Uh, and they were the ones who just got $317,000 from the Canadian government, from the Minister of Public Safety to look into terrorist recruitment and extremism through video games. So that way they can That's later right. monitor everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's also not forget to mention that the Sweet Baby Inc. people that kind of started this, all of this stuff is also uh, a Canadian company that is, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Canada is very involved in basically anti-free speech uh, rhetoric, and they're constantly passing laws that are about anti-free speech. So mm -hmm. um, it, it's, they it's, recently, uh, they recently just either passed a law or are passing a law. I think it might have been passed where you mm -hmm. can actually be jailed for hate speech and hate yes. speech is so minimally defined. And mm -hmm. this, uh, the, the money that they just gave these people for, it ties mm -hmm. directly into that. There's a lot of crossover mm -hmm. in the language that they use. That's right. Uh, the, a the ADL now is heavily involved and they have been for about two years because they also just came out with an article using the exact same language. Um mm -hmm. So yeah, it's really great. It's really it's great. A, These grifters are grifting. It's a rabbit hole. Uh, and it, it, it's a really weird and uh, very draconian mm -hmm. rabbit hole that uh, goes real yep. far. Um, what is this that you just shared there? Friends? Oh, I, I'm just wondering what's happening with Pokemon, which, which is its own company. I want to, and, but there's Pokemon and there's Nintendo, right? Yeah. But mm -hmm. if you look at Nintendo's, I just sent you a listing for a localization specialist where uh, I have to tell you a lot of this woke stuff is coming in. And if you go halfway down the description of duties, you'll see maintains awareness of culturization and DEI related topics, identifying issues and proposing solutions as needed. So this is still going on. Wow. Yeah, Pokemon just put out a job listing as well that I actually applied for. I made a DEI resume, an attempt to infiltrate. Oh, and my God, you for... did? I did. I haven't gotten there an email go. back yet, so we'll see. But um, they, they had a job listing for Washington for the Pokemon company for their DEI, uh, head Ooh. of DEI. And so I, I basically just DEI'd up my resume. It hits all the buzzwords and it even hits the newest one because now it's DEIB, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion and belonging. Savvy, mm. you should you should go for the black girl gamers uh, internal community and I and self-identify <laughs> as black, which is what they ask for. And, oh and, my and, god. And go for it. I, I think I, I think you should have you know your, what? Uh, I your should. moment here. I was I gonna should. say you should just say you're trans. I mean, you're in immediately if you just say you're trans. You gotta send a so, oh. you gotta send a photo though. So just use AI or something. They yeah, like help. use an AI and be like, I'm trans. No, guys. I'll just send it. I'll just send it as me. It's terrible. <laughs> but oh uh, yeah, because no. so you, you don't have to actually be black. You could just self-identify as black. And exactly. That's, okay. that's you true. Can't say anything. Yeah. That's the, true. The other... Excuse me, ma'am. No porn at the bar. Oh, it's okay. I'm transgender. Oh, I, I had no idea. Do whatever you want all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. I did that. that was God. so funny. Um, the other thing, too, with the job listing is immediately after you start filling everything out, they ask you for your self-identification. And they ask you about your sexual orientation, what you identify as. You cannot pick straight. So I said... <laughs> what? <gasps> Are I you kidding? Wow. Yeah, it, it's prefer not to say. The law. 
Yeah. Um, so I I put down other and then I basically went and grabbed Starbucks's uh, longest drink and copy pasted that. So I, I'm, I, a fra- I'm a Frappuccino. I, I'm, so, I'm, just, I'm so like shocked when you say stuff like that, because I grew up during a time where asking a person's like race, gender or sex or any of these things was against was it, the law. Yes, and you it was. A, yeah. It, yeah, it was against the law. Yeah. You, you couldn't ask matter. about this kind of stuff when you're hiring somebody, it, 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 even age. Like you're not even supposed to ask for the age because of ageism and all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And now we're at a place where you can't like you can't answer straight for a question that they're asking because that's yep. definitely not somebody they want. I mean, this is insane. This is it's, literally discrimination. It was a, it was a discriminate. Yeah. It was a discriminatory practice mm-hmm. to ask any of those questions. Like you're you're being hired to do a job. None of that matters. Can you do the job? But now it's like it doesn't matter whether or not you can mm-hmm. do the job. Are you one of these things? Because this is what we're basing your hiring on. Yeah. Like yep. th- this shouldn't matter to a place of work. Yeah. One but, of um, I mean, the things in my in my 20s, too. So I, I, I have a very gender neutral name. It's Taylor. And so I used to actually be really excited about that, that nobody could figure out what I was until the interview because my dad had raised me right. He said, you want to get your job because you're good at the job. Mm-hmm. There's going to be people who will want to hire you just because you're a girl. And then I experienced that in college, too. And it it honestly broke me. Um, mm. I, I it was hard to be in a STEM field and then just have your professor say, oh, we need more women in STEM. I'm like, OK, what about my ideas? Like, I think this jellyfish is really cool. I want to go join that research project, but I want to join it because I'm actually good. And I understand the concepts, not because I'm a fucking woman. Right. Like, it's that, really that, upsetting. That yeah. Uh, yeah. It it uh, and I I I can see it. I mean, I've talked about this with uh gothics before. I've talked about this with a lot of people that it's like now this is it's 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 a form of racism because it's it's mm-hmm. making it so that everyone's questioning their own abilities now. Like, am I really being hired for my ability of and wanting to like because these people actually want me, or am I just you know a a, a a, a check mark am i just being checked uh because uh, th- that's all i am to them it's like you know the color of my skin or what's between my legs or whatever it's disgusting um now with regards to this i just want to say i'm very disappointed in t- nintendo because usually that's nintendo yeah usually they're they stay away from all of that black they, rock they that's do why. black rock Yep, BlackRock has wow. a. Uh, I th- I don't know if they money manage for them, but they they do have a small handle. I know that on them. name. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. Yeah. Uh, now we do have uh, one of our panelists that needs to go. So Michelle, thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, please Party promote birthday. yourself before you go. Yes. Well, I will be back next week and should be able to stay a little longer next week. Um, but yeah, you can catch me, my sister at Force Light Entertainment, and we just put out our first time watching reaction of Field of Dreams uh, in Ooh. honor of baseball starting. Mm-hmm. So definitely check that out. It was, it was really good. But but anyways, you guys enjoy the rest of your talk and I will see you uh, next week. Take care. Yeah, see you next week. Bye, you too Bye, as well. Bye. Take care. Stan, is Stan Lee right? Tom, did you hire me because I'm Canadian? <laughs> You're Canadian? <laughs> I've abandoned my Canadian hair. Yes, I'm Canadian. I thought you uh, were Persian turned Mexican turned Canadian turned. Yeah, it was that's why you're really hired. Persian. It's the Persian part. You got all <laughs> kinds of like check marks you, you 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 click along the way. I know I have way too many check marks. No, you're one of the only people who puts up with my shit. Oh, I do love you. Um do now you read Farsi? I I can. I can read Farsi. Uh, I, I think I got a death threat in Farsi. I'm going to send it to you in Twitter. Please send it to me. I will try. I have no to... idea what it says. Maybe, maybe it's a compliment. I have no idea. Oh my God. <laughs> that would be hilarious. I mean, I've been working on my Farsi, like reading a lot more recently because my nephew's trying to learn Farsi. So now I'm like, you know, I've been working on That's it so and cool. it's like, it's coming back to me a little bit more, but I definitely lost my like reading, writing abilities a lot more than my speaking uh, but now I'm starting to pick it back up. But thankfully, the alphabet stayed in my brain. So, like, that's all you really need is to remember the alphabet. And then you can kind of, like, you know, you're like, I, I know that letter. And you just kind of go. I, I have, like, a reading level of, like, grade, I don't know, two, three. <laughs> but it's it's pretty funny. Uh, but, yeah, send me, the, send me that letter. I want to see it. Um, 
the other thing that I was going to point out with regards to this, uh, this BS is this picture here because we had, um, obviously it was Easter weekend last weekend. Um, and by the way, happy belated Easter to everybody. Um, but a lot of the companies were putting out, you know, trans day of awareness posts, including BioWare. Trans visibility. That's right. Trans visibility day. Trans visibility. Because they need another it. day. Yeah. They stand they... out no matter what. I'm so confused. <laughs> they just, Not they like just... gay confused, just confused. Oh, my God. Uh, but then I saw this. And then Grum said, next on doing it right, because they're saying, enjoy a very hoppy Easter with our character here. So I wanted to definitely share that. I thought this was cool. Is that so hard for a game company to do in the West? I mean, just Apparently, to say happy yeah. Easter and have some, have some eggs? You know, is that is that so hard? It is. Apparently it is. It's pretty People bad. say that's me down there, the, the lower left egg with the glasses. That's, that's me on <laughs> Easter Trans Day. <laughs> oh my god with the little lipstick that's adorable yep. you know that's funny because i thought this was Cab Cab cabrutus like a oh just like them a little bit and this could be you mark because they're there together could be, could be that's really cute um yeah i mean is it really that hard for people to just uh, i don't know not pander uh, yeah i guess that's difficult i guess that is very difficult uh, now let's get to a couple of these, more of these super chats. And then, uh, I wanted to talk about some other stuff. Um, here we go. Uh, comics dad. Thank you for the 499 says, love you all. And your work grums love seeing you guys all over the place on those fools and SBI and need to, uh, all need to see Ron Coleman's response. Chef's kiss. Um, oh. that's cool. I think I think they're they're having the community vote on the response right now. And uh, and yeah, I mean, Ron's first one he revealed on the last stream and it was basically it was a troll. It was an April 1st troll. And it was hilarious. <clears throat> oh, I wonder that's if they funny. posted that anywhere. Um, I got to say, I hate April Fool's Day. Are, are you guys are you guys a fan? <laughs> uh, I, no, uh, but but I had to partake this time around. It was too good not to pass up. Did you say you're gonna quit too? Because I will slap you if you say no, no, that. no, no, no. I, I, okay. I announced my wedding. I, oh, yeah, that's situation. right. The wedding, that, <laughs> that's right. No, I thought that was serious. That was the only th one I fell for then because I was like, that was for sure. It's got to be serious. Um, I mean, there's so many people that like were like, I'm quitting, like, uh, freaking, uh, what's his name, Mr. B. Full jokes are so dumb, they're dumb, like, Mr. Beast. James O'Keefe, they're all like, oh, I'm quitting and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, get new material. Like, everyone uses this every year. Like, every content creator is like, I'm quitting. So, I, I hate that. That's like, why I went to the latest good. one this morning. I'm it like, Andre and I are getting married though. and the channel is going full woke. <laughs> At least that's something. Oh, my God. Uh, what were you saying, Stephanie? Did you say something? I just, just don't fall for anything today. Yeah, yeah, I I, I didn't take anything seriously, which is difficult because on a really sad and related news, I found out somebody you know ended their own life, and I didn't believe it at first because I thought that that was uh, that was a joke going around, and it turned out to be true. And it's a it's a very very sad state of things uh, because cancel culture got someone else, uh, and that's something that we might have to speak on uh, next week. Uh, but man, uh, it, it's tough. Yeah, it's tough to terrible. believe uh, nowadays. Uh, thank you uh, for the super chat. Uh, Stephanie, do you want to get this one? Uh, Revuel, uh, Revuel, uh, for five dollars. Character designs from Vindic Vindictus defying fate are incredible. Hashtag Nexon. Ooh, very nice. Um, and then we have 16 bit mascot for 350. So as these uh, ladies speak in truth sauce, Mick love all, all ya. Thank you. I love Mick loving. Uh, and then Nicholas Horton sent us a super sticker. What was it? It was a doggy farting hearts. So thank you so much for that. Um, and then we have this one here as well. Go ahead, Stephanie. Uh, what is that? Nike physics? Nike e physics? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. 
same, same studio, studio as Stella Blade. Uh, what is it? What, what is this called? Grubs? Nike? I've, I've never heard. Which one? The, what is it? What does it say? N I K K. I have no Nick? idea. Nikkei? Okay. Okay. I have no idea. I thought you might be familiar with what he's talking about. Sorry. Uh, I actually am not. Good. Good to know. Okay. Uh, Meta Bun for two bucks says Japan and Korea are not safe if we don't stop it here. I mean, you're right because the woke mind virus will go after everything. It's already sort of entered anime, and I'm not. I'm not happy about it. The other thing that has to stop right here, sorry, it totally reminded me, you know, uh, that 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 legal letter that was sent out that that's attempting to shut down any sort of uh, comment whatsoever about the woke stuff going on. If we don't stand together and nip that in the bud now, you're going to get everybody who's got a thousand bucks in their pocket sending out cease and desist letters mm -hmm. to every YouTuber out there. And oh, that I'm is funny. that is something that we can't allow to happen. I mean, we can't allow free speech to be to be tarnished in this way. Mm -hmm. And so I, I want to highlight how, you know, all jokes aside, it, that cease and desist letter, that's an important event and we all need to pay attention to it and we all need to make fun of them for it and we all need to fight against it and stand together. Yes, very, yes, preach, help. That, that is so true. Um, and then Stephanie, go ahead for this one. Uh, well, Anokai Kala, oh no, for two, I work for a gaming team. We are to create non-gender. What? Non-gender. Like um, androgynous. Yeah. Body type one, body type two. Body type two. I'm so <laughs> over that, it. That kills me too. I hate, I hate it. that. I'm so over it. I mean, you know what's funny is I was actually thinking like I I'm playing Helldivers right now and I love, I love that game. But even Helldivers is like that. Like there's no good looking characters. They're all ugly um terrible designs none of them look female like you have the female voice but like there's definitely no boobs like i mean it's such a fun game and there's so much that i love about it and there's like a lot of like anti-woke stuff but man the characters are ugly like they are not good looking uh so i'm, I'm just saying they could have made like some female looking characters a little a little bit better um have you been playing that grooms have you played any uh, I'm only level eight. I haven't had that much time to play with all this controversy breaking loose, uh, but it is a fantastic game. My my kids play it endlessly. I jump in them with them when I can, and it is so refreshing. And that's the whole up and coming double A uh, phenomenon, right? Where you've got mm -hmm. games that are with budgets of twenty million or so, uh, uh, twenty million or less, and they are just knocking it out of the park. They are dominating the charts while triple A is just waning. So, yeah, I, I definitely am a fan of managed democracy. I also found a clip from the Nikkei game that they were talking oh. about. I believe it's a mobile game. And, uh, you mm -hmm. know, they're talking about, uh, you know, uh, the male gaze. I think that that's a pretty funny one. <laughs> OK, let's uh, let's play that. Um, it's a yeah, boot it's democracy, a not mm -hmm. sexy. Look, you can spread <laughs> democracy while being sexy at the same time. Uh, that's true. I, I, I believe that you can. I'm an advocate. That the DK game uh, is like physics, jiggle physics on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Okay, so for scientists who love physics, I I love physics and science. Here. We go. Oh shoot! Look at her butt. Best recoil animation ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, there's a lot of jiggling going on. It's a high school of the dead. Uh, in game form. <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. I I love it. This is what I'm talking about, Grums. Like imagine <laughs> imagine this and Hell Divers. Like it, it would be great. We need more yeah. female looking characters. Uh, you know, we need we, we we need characters of all types and we need games that uh, appeal to different parts of the market uh, or we're not a healthy creative society. And what I have is not against representation. It's not a, a, about, you know, about that at all. It's really about how destructive it is, is that it's been weaponized. DEI has been weaponized to go after our beloved characters uh, of the past because they're unable to create anything new. And so mm -hmm. they have to tear down everything that came before it and, and going after uh, you know, and being racist against white gamers and being sexist against male gamers, that doesn't need to happen to spread, 
you know, uh, diversity in games. And we've always been diverse. Uh, Blizzard, we've been diverse for a long time. And, you know, uh, we had a Black Paladin in Diablo 2. We didn't do it because of DEI. We said, hey, that'd be cool. Let's just do it. There was no talk of we weren't excluding anyone. This is a total fabricated mm -hmm. myth that is basically lining the pockets of grifters. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, real quick, this is hilarious. Uh, I will not apologize for modeling for Helldivers. 20 bucks is 20 bucks. That's fair enough. That, that, that's fair enough. Um, getting into the more of these super chats, Hamilton Burry, thank you. The five says Canada's trying to pass the Online Harms Act, which includes various Orwellian measures, including a panel with court power that can take down websites. This is all very true. It's and it's very sad. Canada's well, it's election name. year. You're going to see a lot more of that. Uh, they they definitely want to tap down on free speech. Uh, sorry, misinformation during election misinformation. year. They're very sensitive. Misinformation. To it. Yeah, that's right. I don't like her. She's that's a what bitch. they wanted to. Um, exactly. Go ahead, uh, Stephanie. Uh, Abduello for ten dollars. I recommend you contact you YouTuber Dimitri Monroe. He's been looking into the West, tampering with Japanese media for years, as well as Pokemon. Pokemon. Turning their, Pokemon. I'm like, wait, turning their characters into featureless blobs. Ooh, okay. I'm gonna have to look into this person. Uh, same mm -hmm. with you, Grums. Dimitri Monroe. Sure. Check him out. Um. Thank you, Chaos Sonic One for the five dollars. Says J uh, SJWs usual that usually. Oh, you want these girls to fap too? Here's the thing: your likes are public, and you SJW uh, SJWs get caught in 4K likes the same and younger. Ooh, ew, gross. And you're you're right. <laughs> it's ugh. well, I, I think that speaks to the the broader theme of the hypocrisy of being mm -hmm. sex positive and promoting your wife's only fans and at the same time saying you, you can't have a fictional beautiful character yeah mm -hmm. very very much so uh go ahead stephanie that's so weird isn't it mm -hmm. a lot like, of hypocrisy let's, let's, going promote, on. let's promote sexuality be all about sexuality but you can't sexualize fictional characters mm -hmm. so stupid uh, Please only for sexualize time. real women <laughs> <laughs> they don't yeah. even let us do we that anymore though that's the thing by the way, subscribe to my OnlyFans. It's so stupid. Uh, oh, my God. I thought you meant, like, for real. I was like, wait, what? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, God damn, Stephanie coming on Toxic Femme and dropping this bomb. Okay. Sorry. Are you sorry, kidding? Uh-uh. And don't clip that out either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ladies, keep rocking. Savvy, my fellow vampire. Grums, you are our Arthas, our crown prince. And what's happening right now is, like, the purge of... Stratholm, I'm like, yeah. Okay. Oh man, that that wasn't a, a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Arthas, Arthas did some stuff. <laughs> That's all right though. Thank you. Uh, unlike Uther and J Jaina, you my support. Oh, I think he meant this as, an, as a compliment. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, a hardcore curtsy. Thank you for the five do uh, dollars. One, I am trans, and I don't like the current politics surrounding it. Uh, when I was uh, uh, little, I remember them preaching tolerance, live and let live. It's, yeah. uh, I don't know they if there's a part up. two. I don't see mm, one. Maybe they're still writing it. Yeah, they might be writing it. So thank you. Well, uh, I'm looking forward to reading the second part. Uh, and dude. Well, most level-headed people don't like the politics surrounding all of this. It's the activists. They're making things worse for the for right. the community. They're muddying the waters and making people um, tired of it. You know, they, they themselves, because of their, you know, loud screeching and wanting to be involved in everything and, you know, trying to make everything so PC you and trying to like uh, um, pretty much tell you what you can and can't say, what you can and how you can and can't think. They're creating this world of intolerance mm -hmm. and you know, they're they're creating what they they are themselves creating. What they're trying to say is already Something it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Um, it's like it's a constantly exactly creating what they what they hate. They think it's themselves. already happening now, and it's it's not. You're creating it. Uh, Hardcore came out uh, with another one here for five dollars. Says uh, two. It's different now. They demand that you have to accept and celebrate us. 
that isn't tolerant or accepting of other people's beliefs. Man, if only more people thought the way you did, I don't think any of this stuff would be happening towards trans people. Um, well, that's the way we were raised. I exactly. Mean, like Steph put it best. A lot of this stuff comes from these companies like black girl grifters, right? Like that's where mm -hmm. all this stuff comes from. Mm -hmm. uh, they're dividing. They're the ones actually doing what they're claiming the white boys and everybody else are doing. It's the mm -hmm. projection, right? The projection is so hardcore. It's not even funny. And I mean, mm -hmm. we've gotten to this point with this crap now where, you know, I'm glad Grums and, and some of the other people have finally gotten, you know, the word out there. Cause like I said, you know, I've said over and over again, that that's one thing I, I, I'm very impressed by the gaming community by as much shit as I give any of the, you guys, you guys know how to make changes fast. I wish, you know, the, the fan film fan communities were as organized, right? Even one of the communities, mm -hmm. let alone, you know, the entirety, but yeah. I think the, like the closest we came was, was Star Wars at first with the last Jedi. Cause mm, I think everyone then, was it's still so pretty fucked. scattered, right? Not nearly as organized as the gaming community. It's, That's true. I mean, yeah. I've, I don't think I've ever seen anything this organized before and getting shit done. Like it, it it's been like, you know, that that's the most fascinating part is like Cabrutus came out with that thread and it's just been a freaking wild showdown since then and things are changing already uh and all of these people getting exposed which i love to see i just love to see it uh here yeah we go. it's, it's important to, to do it because the only way that this is going to change is if we if we affect the the, the profits of these mega corporations so uh mm -hmm. you know I, i'm actually calling on gamers it's like hey put aside your triple a games just for just for a year or two and go indie because if you do, I guarantee you, you will see these companies pivot so hard and start making games that you like again. But it's going to take a little bit of discipline and a little bit of hanging together. Yeah. And the fact, too, the, the nice part, too, especially about right now with technology, is it's easier than ever to make games. We have so many games released on Steam every day, every week that are even just made by one dude. Like, mm -hmm. that's crazy. And so AAA companies are no longer the industry standard because mm -hmm. it's easy. Like someone like me can go into Blender, make a bunch of assets, and then I have access to Unreal and suddenly I can make a game. Like that's what I've been personally trying mm -hmm. to learn for a little while. And one of the saddest things too, and I've, I, I think I've got a thread on this, but I basically asked, why can't SBI go make something new? Why are they not going into, say, Chicago or Detroit or anywhere else that's not an entertainment hub, teaching people how to create a studio, how to organize, how to budget, how to create new stories and put together games, and then literally tell incredible and amazing diverse stories that feature other cultures. Because if you look at all the things that they've worked on, every single character that they've touched is exactly the same. They are hollow, they are flawless, and they are basically just bastardizations of themselves. And it's mm -hmm. the strangest thing that I've ever seen. And that's how you know that all of this is just some fake little grift and they don't actually care because they also get things wrong mm -hmm. uh, spider-man 2 like, flag thing yeah that sounds like way too much work for for these for them it's it's way yeah. too much yeah, that's work. actual they work don't, it's actual work yeah they don't hire they don't hire people based on you know what you can what you can do they're, they're hiring activists activism yeah. is completely something completely different they, they are lazy they are a hundred percent lazy so they're not lazy. original Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're very lazy. They're not original. All that matters to them is politics. And how can I insert them into something that already exists? Because that's just the easier way of of doing it, right? There's that's why I keep saying any, any, type of like, any type of original stories that an activist would come up with that would they that they would tell are are boring because it's way too preachy. Nobody would like. Nobody would want it. Nobody would like it. Nobody would buy it. It's mm -hmm. way too yep. preachy. And it's something that's just made to tell you your way of thinking has been wrong and it's been wrong for years. And this is actually the right way of thinking. And I'm here to tell you how you should think. And that's not something that would appeal to anybody. Um, no. So it would, it would automatically can, be away. 
Yeah. And you can tell that they have zero passion for this because like, so I, as a creative consultant, I, even though I charge for my work, I will still sit down with people and talk to them for hours for free because I love what I do. It's not about money for me. Yeah. I want to be able to pay my bills, obviously, but at the end of the day, I'm a storyteller and all Mm -hmm. I want to do is tell stories and I want to help other people tell stories too, no matter how that is, whether it's through a product, a logo, characters, games, whatever, you know, it's, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's, I hate using that phrase now because it, it's tainted, but I am offended by their lack of passion. <laughs> there's, I know. there's really no passion anymore. In, I know. In and I don't know when, when they started to, to lose that passion. I want to say like, it's the, honestly, I hate saying it, but I feel like, you know, uh, colleges nowadays are instilling oh. passion and activism, you yep. know, th- like that's, that's really the only thing that they're passionate about nowadays. Girl, you're not wrong though. You're not wrong because like Mm -hmm. even in like high school, you know, like you're not like, I mean, think about it. Even in like a lot of the regular schools and high schools and stuff, they've cut out all these creative programs. Like, you know, before before they have college, like you don't get any home ec anymore. You don't get any drama. You don't get any like painting art. Like all of these things have gone out the door because they want more STEM people. But at the same time, they've like replaced all these classes with like, you know, gender studies and like all these like literal nonsense that you get to and then you get to college and you have no background on in art or anything else that you can go forward with because uh, again they've cut out all of the stuff so they're literally cutting these kids off at the you know at the knees well it's because these people are not creatives they're they're just activists yeah that's all they are they're not activists like they're just conditioning all these kids to become activists to follow their and they're literally system. using all of our things, and we've said this before, so it's not news to us, but this is what they're doing, is they're just using all the things that we love to to inundate us with their politics and their bullshit. They have literally taken it, taken it all over, and we let them do it. Mm-hmm. We let them do it. We sat back and watched it happen. I mean, now some of us were trying to tell everybody sooner. I'm not trying to be like, oh, I fucking told you. Well, so, no, I, I blame, I blame, honestly blame <laughs> like, complacency. You know, you, you yeah. were, yeah, it, it's complacency. You're just like, oh, well, and, and it's honestly like, I feel like it's a, a generation of people who, you know, were raised to, well, I'm going to mind my own business, mm-hmm. right? That's and we exactly just, we, it. Yeah. We, we mind our own business and we just let it happen because mm-hmm. it's not any of my business, but you don't see those, those well, long-term effects of just minding your own business. And honestly, and they also, with the education system, you know, even the teachers, the people going into teaching, mm-hmm. into the teaching profession, I stories. are activists. Yep. They are activists. And I feel like a lot of times people who go into teaching, they don't go into it for, you know, for the passion. They go into it, one, to, you know, uh, mold younger minds into their way of thinking. And, hey, they get holidays off, mm-hmm. uh, summers off, spring break, like. Yeah, let's let's only work a little so cushy time. job. To add to that, so I for my first year of uh, university, for whatever reason, they stuck me on the the teachers floor. So all the other girls were were in the teaching program. I was the only one in the science program. I don't remember why that happened, but uh, I got to see the type of of women going into it. Some of the most immature and insecure individuals I have ever had the misfortune of meeting. My first roommate ended up uh she requested to not be my roommate because we, we we had some problems um by the end of it uh she, she was from a small town I, I won't get too far into this but it's a funny story she was from a very small town she was so insecure and then she learned she learned what alcohol was basically her first year of college so i started oh, no. playing call of duty and porn on the tv so that way she'd get out <laughs> but um <laughs> It, it was miserable because she she would say the dumbest shit. And I'm like, you want to be a teacher? You hate kids. And she's wow. like, yeah, but but I can shape them in my image. And I'm like, oh, nobody God. wants to be a land whale. Calm down. Mm-hmm. Bingo. That's exactly why they want to be. They want to shape. They want to groom these kids into their way of thinking. Because they know and no also, man's going to fucking get in their And also have own. like yeah. a bunch of vacation days and take time off. Um that it's it's terrible yeah. it is so terrible it's tragic and they are insecure it? they are insecure because you see a lot of a lot of these teachers teachers activist teachers on tiktok you know crying in their cars because a group of elementary kids or even preschoolers 
called them, you know, ma'am when they're a non-binary. I mean, you know, that was that was the silver, silver lining with COVID is that it exposed so many, like Libs of TikTok came out to expose so many of these weirdo teachers that were like saying random shit on like these Zoom calls that the, the, the teachers were having. That was like the only thing that came out of COVID that was like a positive a net positive for everybody is finding out how much of these creeps are teaching your kids. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's crazy out there. Uh, thank you so much, Sonny, uh, for the massive, uh, super chat here for 20 it says Arthas did some questionable things, but his heart was in the right place right now. Uh, an uh, another, uh, is that World of Warcraft? No, Warcraft, Warcraft three. three. Warcraft yeah, three. Warcraft three. Ref, uh, these progressives are uh, uh, dread lords pulling the string in the darkness, just like uh, Frost uh, Morn. We hunger for betterment. Well, thank you for for pulling from the original lore of WoW, which is since cratered into the ground thanks to mm -hmm. uh, DEI and wokeness. So, <laughs> I, I'll take that. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I. By the way, Warcraft three. One of the best games of all time. Just gonna say oh, that right now. Uh, Sheep cool. tag. Game. Sheep tag, man. That's my home. <laughs> I love that game. Why don't? I also, Never Winter Nights. I mean, I I saw yes, your I saw you. your tweet about that, and I was like, see, like we're gonna get along because I I mean I love Never Winter Nights too. That's my favorite one. But man, some of these classic games are some of the best games that we ever had. They don't make them like they used to, man. That got me into hacking, into modding, figuring mm -hmm. out how to make games like mm -hmm. Starcraft, of course, of course, Starcraft. Oh yeah. Uh. I mean, there's just so many good ones out there. That was there. my favorite project to work on. That was that was the most bonding moment at Blizzard to work on Aww. that project. It's too bad that Blizzard has gone so fucking stupid. Um, thank you, Too Tired for $5. says, appealing to the trans gaze is basically appeasing, uh, appeasing the trans community by ensuring that no biological females look better and sexier than they. Okay, well, that's a tough you. one. I don't I don't really understand it and I'd love to talk to more trans gamers. It's like do you do you I mean isn't the goal to to you know to pass isn't it to to look attractive to, to and integrate and, to integrate and, into the and and, yeah. and and so why would you want to downplay the feminine features it, which is more attractive to you is like having a a female avatar and then downplaying the femininity or do you do you want sort of like the ideal femininity to aspire to? It's like which mm -hmm. one is going to be the bigger draw? for for the trans gamer i'd really like to know the answer to that mm -hmm. question there's That's interesting a... uh psych psychological components of that and i saw it a lot with with how the sims handled things because they constantly kept appeasing to the to the realism so like they added in those scars they got rid of um you know the, the gender differences essentially and then they added the whole pronoun thing and i think what it comes down to is the terminally online not not the 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 trans people who are, you know, normal, just trying to live their life, but the terminally online ones, there is something chemically wrong in their brains where they can't do escapism. They're mm. probably part of the 50% of the population that doesn't have the inner monologue. I still can't find one of those. Mm -hmm. um, well, and are you surprised when they spend their whole life LARPing? Look, <laughs> I spent most of my life writing fan fiction as other characters because I don't believe in self-insert because that's boring. So you can LARP and be creative, but this is this is different. This is this is tragic. This is people who who were never taught how to create or maybe there is something chemically wrong in their brain and they just can't. But it's just weird when you when you see that because you're like, why wouldn't you want to play as the woman? Because mm -hmm. that's, you know, what Grom said, that is that not the end game? I, I feel like maybe there is probably something chemically wrong in their brain. Yeah. It depends on if they're perpetually online, then it does slow down, you know, the, mm -hmm. um, uh, the, um, oh my gosh, I had it in my, I tip of my tongue. Cerebral. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the development. Oh, I could, I couldn't figure yeah. out the word development, like brain development. Wow. Like brain fart. It, it, yeah, total brain fart. They are incredibly immature. Yes, it'll <laughs> slow, it slows down brain development. It takes away from anything creative. I mean, you do see it nowadays with the iPad kids. Yeah, you know, with Gen Alpha. <sighs> God, it's you the see worst it right now with Gen Alpha because they were they had their whole lives already um, 
basically online. You know, it's so home, bad. It's online. They, they were, it was so a, bad. Yeah, yeah, there's a study that that to, shows their um their uh-huh. their te- the this is the first generation that they actually are techno- technologically degressing. So this is the it's first time that we're so seeing bad. you know 15 to 18 year olds who don't know anything about technology. They just live on the scroll phone. They 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 can't build a computer. They can't identify parts. They uh they can't do anything. They can't they can't even work a toaster. Like right, oh. yes, something as simple as that. And it's so funny because you see like honest. Oh God, I need to. Here I am. You, I'm, I'm on. I'm on TikTok a lot because I do uh, like a, a. We have a, a special TikTok. guest I with us. Right What's now. up? Look at that, Jeremy. Um, but <laughs> you see these ah. people. You see these parents, and they're 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 filming their kids, and they think it's so funny that they can't work a toaster or they can't work a, a microwave. They think it's funny, but honestly, it's not. It's Project. not funny. They can't work these these basic things that they need you know, to, to know, understand how to use. But, you know, with Gen Alpha, it's scary because, you know, they can't retain any information that, mm-hmm. because and everything with the degradation is degradation of education. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. It's so hard for them to retain anything because they are perpetually online. So I wonder if these people, you know, they, they, there is some sort of like, uh, um, development problem because they are perpetually online. Yeah. So that sort of slows down the creativity process. They don't know how to create because, why, why do they right. create something when every when they can just look up something or they can look up how to do something? There's no creativity there. Everything is just at your fingertips. You can find it however you want. I think you're totally right. And speaking of terminally online, here's Jeremy from the quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank hey, you Jeremy. for being here tonight, man. Yeah, What's going on? I guess I'm glad you didn't say, speaking of not knowing how to do the most basic tasks. <laughs> no, no, that's yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hi, yeah. I, um, hi, how's everyone doing? We're doing good. Uh, we're just yeah. talking. Glad to have with, you. Uh, yeah, glad yep. to have you here. Mm. Uh, we're just talking about you know all this crazy stuff going on with uh, video games and, and of black course, girl like, grifters and all that stuff. Yeah, yep. I did see. Yeah, I saw the um, WW Pro just shared the cease and desist. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's funny. The black girl gamer saga is funny because uh, it's the literal it's a frayed meme from starship troopers because yeah. yeah a lot it's my opinion that a lot of these like black girl gamers is probably like two or three people it's not a, they they present themselves as some super huge mega corporation but it's probably like just a few people who have um some white guilt money coming in every month and they can't afford to have the boat rocked and they're overcorrecting in a hilarious way <laughs> and uh it's it's funny to watch now to be fair this is going to work for them too cuz they're going to say oh my gosh these racist sexist guys give money please <laughs> like and and they'll get some but you can only do that so many times for for example i don't know mark if you saw this or if anybody else in the panel saw this uh that ceo uh your old coworker poked her head oh. out on on twitter for like 8 seconds last night before going private again and uh, from Unleashed Games, I don't know if anyone saw that. Oh. She she came. She was the one that's like, "Aha, zero out of six men in our alpha build. <laughs> it's so you. good." And then she got obviously some people had some issues with that. <clears throat> so then she privated her account, privated Unleashed Gaming, or I think. I, I, I oh, that's I'm... right. I saw her interactions yeah. with you. That was yeah. hilarious. <laughs> I was dying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she popped out unprivated. I for whatever reason just probably because I'm terminally online. I was like, what the? And it was like on my timeline. And it's like, she tweeted this three minutes ago. I was like, wait a minute. What did you mean when you said this? And the showed her like another one of her old white guys, bad tweet. Boom. Private again. Like, oh my god it was so funny because you yeah. even invited her on your channel and was I like did, well yeah. if you are like if you're actually being legit right now and there was a some sort of confusion why don't you come on and and, and talk to me about it and of course she didn't reply to that of course no. she didn't take you up on the offer i'm guessing she didn't right like she didn't dm you no. like yeah, sure, i I'll followed her so she could yeah i followed her so she could dm and she didn't and like there was you know another tweet that I, I forget their other two. Her other two was just as cringe. Some like white guys, am I right? And I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. like, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of like the white guys uh, thing going on with these. Uh, a lot of these gamer companies are just like, we don't want white men uh, in any mm-hmm. of these spaces. I mean, who does really? But the thing is, uh, 
this you know you are all very young uh tom's a little bit older i know mark's old as dirt but the ah, this wow. this stuff used to work like in 2015 oh, yeah. 20, 2012 to 2016 that lady tweeting that zero six female ceo zero of six white men would have been a cash printing machine just 10 yeah. years ago and then it's, it's like true. they don't they don't know that the things have changed they are yeah. stuck and they're running the old playbook down to a T and it's going to, it's going to run them into the dirt. Uh, this is going to become so unprofitable and we need to make it unprofitable so right. that this stuff stops. And the, it's the only way to do it. It's got to vote with your wallet. Well, people didn't used to fight back, you know, like uh, I feel like back then people were, out, I don't want to say like outnumbered, but it almost felt like you were outnumbered because, you know, more, more people would like screech back at you online. But I feel like now, now, right now, people have had it like we, we're done. You know, it's, it's over. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't want to be preached to anymore. People are so over it now. So you have even more people sort of fighting back at, you know, these, these ac activists in all of these companies. It yeah, comes down to the population too online. So 10 years ago, there were a lot less people. And mm -hmm. what these other types would do is they would have alt accounts. They would have, you know, five mm -hmm. to 10 of them. And so they made themselves look bigger than they were. Mm -hmm. And because they were terminally online and the idea of just advertising online was still relatively new. And I use that very loosely because we see how powerful online advertisement is. But they thought, oh, if if we just pander to this, we'll make even more money. And so now we have more normies online and more people are finding out, hey, we don't actually have to give in to the cancel because nobody really gives a shit. Well, that's the thing is they would go ahead. Go ahead. No, you oh, go, no, no. go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Tom. I was just going to say they appeal to, you know, basically the nice person and everybody, right? Like that's the thing is the it's all a game. Right. You can't say anything negative about it because then when you do, they will call you this stophobe, whatever it is. And you're afraid of that. Right. Because as soon as you get labeled that, we know what that means in this culture now. And Andre's brought this point up before, too. And this actually goes back to the whole thing about kids not being able to use toasters and stuff like that, because it's true. A kid nowadays should be able to just sit on an apple, you know, from way back in the day and just be able to do stuff that we could never have dreamed of doing with it. And it, it, they can't because they don't even know how to turn the damn thing on. But that being said, like, yeah, it, it's 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 getting to that point. But anyway, we were going to say something savvy anyway. I, I didn't want to lose your point. It's gone now. She lost it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> she lost it. I was, say I was trying out. to be quick about what I was trying to say there. Yeah. I'll say no. one of the big things that is that isn't getting talked about for why the biggest part of this like new way, new push is Elon Musk's purchase of Twitter and more uh -huh. specifically the removal of the two class system with the blue check marks. So now before the only people that got blue check marks were far left leaning activist people. We know this to be true now, thanks mm -hmm. to the Twitter files. And so all they would see in the replies is everyone who already agree with them. Now they put it out there and they get flooded with normies who have $6 a month. And the replies are getting filled with people are like, ah, not nah, player. I don't know. I don't agree with this. Before all you ever had were the quote tweets. If you were like, if I was reporting on something and somebody getting ratioed, it'd be like, oh, I have to go to the quote tweets and see mm -hmm. what's what's actually being said. Now, even like even there are people in the conservative space like Dave Rubin and Jeremy Boring who whine about poor people being able to get into their mentions um, or yeah. regular normies. <laughs> yeah. So like there are a lot of people who like were elitist Twitter people. Uh, th there's a lot to criticize about Elon's ownership of Twitter, but. Most of this pushback has come on. Look at Mark's Twitter feed. I mean, I, I I bet you he's had more impressions this month than maybe ever. Is that is that yeah? Fair I, to say? I, I would say that it's it's uh, it's up there. Well, for sure. no, when, when GG One started, I definitely had a lot of okay. impressions until they imposed all the shadow banning tools, all the trending tools. I could get stuff trending on Twitter re on the regular, like three, four times, no problem. Uh, but then it all went dead really, really quickly. And my followers were capped. The, like Everyone would start to join, and then they would trickle drain them down afterwards. And it's definitely all changed since it became X. Um, real quick, I want to get these a uh, couple of super chats here from Sunny. Wow. Uh, thank you for the 50. Whoa! Thank you so much. Nice. 
Because I suffer from chronic fatigue syndrome. I also suffer mm -hmm. from hypersensitivity to sunlight, allergic to garlic. Uh, so I'm a vampire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't really go out uh, go out if it's light outside. So I stay home a lot. Gaming is all really uh, is all I really got these days due to my fatigue. Yes. And, Have you tried uh, sucking blood? <laughs> so That's I think not where I thought that, that was going. <laughs> well, so so I have solar urticaria, where I'm actually allergic to UV radiation. So I cannot actually be outside for long. This happened due to a medication, and it completely changed my physiology. I'm also legitimately allergic to garlic, so. That's wow. my vampire brother. So you're like literally vampire. Vampire. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, have you tried scary. sucking I blood? <laughs> <laughs> I never kiss and tell. Oh my god. I love that answer. Uh, he also followed it up with for another 10 here. Thank you, Sonny. Says, uh, I've been gaming since I was two. I'm 36, going on 37 this year. I will fight for gaming. It's all I have. I refuse to let these people ruin it for me and for others. Sending my love to all of you all. Thank you so much, Sonny. You've been uh, a, a very good, great supporter tonight yes. here. Thank you so much uh, yep. for your generosity and your words because your your words mean a lot. And that this is why I wanted to do this show and cover, especially because we don't really talk a lot about gaming on toxic femininity uh, as much as like, you know, I would love to because I love video games. But um, I, it's, it's a big topic and it's something that needs to be covered because we do talk about entertainment and woke ideology and the woke mind virus here on Midnight's Edge a lot. And this is exactly what's going on in gaming. And I definitely wanted to get that side of things as well. So thank you. Uh, again, Jeremy and uh, uh, Mark for being here tonight to do that with me. Um, and we have a couple of other super chats here. Thank you, Sammy, for 499 says, I thought uh, Borderlands 2 was funny in 2012. I wish I had never brought it, uh, bought it because it was woke by modern standards then. Did you guys like Borderlands 2? I said 2 was fine. It's 3 that's fine. the problem yeah. with, the yeah. bad, with the bad writing. <laughs> I never got into Borderlands. You know what I would say? Sometimes you got to just yeah. enjoy something too. Like, you know, there are things that, you know, like, for example, most of the music that I listen to, I guarantee the musicians are very different politically than me. Sometimes if you just enjoy the game, you shouldn't feel guilty about it. And then if you buy all your games on like Steam sale or on disc, you can minimize the damage. Just don't buy anything that's <laughs> brand new. And then, you know, and then you can enjoy it because at least you got it cheap. No pre-orders yep. anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I yeah the the last time that I bought one of those triple A gaming things um, was actually uh, well other than Baldur's Gate, but Baldur's Gate I would like Baldur's Gate too that the new one that came out or uh, three three um, yeah. that one was because it was in development for so long and I played the original like the version that they uh, they released and I was like I can't wait until this comes out so I was waiting for that for like years to come out. But the other one was Starfield. And man, that game was so trash. And it wasn't just even the pronoun thing that was like a, a problem. It was like the literal actual game. Like it wouldn't, it would barely run on my system. And there was like a part where like literally like the character's eyeballs are like sticking yeah, out yeah, of the yeah. screen. And I was like, what is happening in this game? Like it was just so bad that I had to quit. And then of course, our good friend Ian Miles Chungus took took my tweet and like top tier your journalist. I know, and he yeah. was like, he's like, check out these people that are trying to make it so that this is like, like some woke thing, and like just took my tweet and put out the part I said about the pronouns and nothing about how my my system didn't keep up with the game, and, and was I like, am for one am shocked. Trash game. I'm I know shocked that he would do that. Yeah. I know. I am too. I cannot believe that he did that. I was. I. I expected yeah. so much more of him. <laughs> uh, go ahead. You Stephanie. did. Oh, never mind. You're being sarcastic. <laughs> yes. Uh, Fiona from Vindictus is buying Fate better than Eve in Stellar Blade. Ooh. Okay. That's a hot take. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Giga Bear for yeah, ten yeah. says the indies are leading the way on charge for the gaming games industry. I think yep. that's that's what Mark's been saying. Uh, and then go ahead, Stephanie. Hardcore uh, curtsy for 10. There's a sad lack of tact and restraint on my side. Uh, when you're the outsider, sometimes you are the one who has to be respectful. And it's okay to also expect it back. But you have to give it to get it. Absolutely. I mean, that's how I was raised. That's no, and that's the thing is, too. 
Yeah, it, it, we were talking about that earlier. And I, this is a problem with this whole woke mentality, right? It's like, because it, it, it literally to me, and this is where I can't believe people who are uh, disabled haven't said more because, like, most people who are disabled just want to live their lives and not have everybody, you know, make a big deal out of their disability. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and to me, this woke thing is like an, a good example of like somebody who is disabled and everybody trying to help them constantly. Like, can you imagine how annoying that would be if, you know, you were disabled and you're just trying to do something on your own and everybody just kept constantly trying to help you? It's like you get it. They're trying to do the right thing. They're trying to be nice, but it's mm-hmm. going to get frustrating after a while, you know, and it's yep. it, it's kind of to me, you know, hardcore curtsy. I can't imagine the shit you got to go through on a daily basis just because of the crap that these woke fuckers have done to the communities. Right. And, mm-hmm. I, and I have friends that are gay and trans and, and lesbian too, and all that stuff. And they all pretty much in agreement think, with this, all this stuff. Yeah. This I actually thing. think it's, it's the, the, the people who are like hardcore curtsy and, you know, I know a, a, a few more uh, like S- uh, Sarah uh, Higton, I think his, uh, it's her name online and everyone, like even people like, you know, Blair White, they're the ones that have the most problem is because like, they're actually normal people. Like, you know, <laughs> they don't want to hurt kids. They don't want to talk about this kind of stuff. They want to live their lives privately. And they just, you know, they just want everyone to, to be, you know, who they are or whatever, but just like keep the kids out of it and just, just live your life kind of thing. And I think you guys are the ones that are hurting the most now because it's all this pendulum stuff that's going to swing. And it, yep. it's, it's just really unfortunate that you guys are, you're the normal ones that are going to get, you know, st- stuck in between that. Yeah. And the pendulum stuff. pendulum is going to sh- swing too. And this is part of what I was going to say earlier before I just cut myself off. Um, but like these kids nowadays, this upcoming generation, the zoomers, um, we've got some problems, uh, because of all the way the media has done all this stuff, the way the woke culture has been, they're creating bigots, they're creating racists, they're creating misogynists yes, and it's are. not their fault, right? Because they're being brought into this crap through all this woke stuff and they're rejecting it wholeheartedly. In fact, we're, we're deep in, uh, investigating a, a video that I've been working on with Andre, where it started off just with, you know, millennials and, and zoomers are tired of you know, their dad's remakes and reboots and sequels, right? Like mm-hmm. that's, the, you know, partially that's probably why Ghostbusters failed so miserably. It was but also same, a bad movie. It was a bad movie, It was a bad movie, It doesn't matter. Big thing is you'll go look at the ratings. The, the adults, most for the most part, liked it. Kids were not going to see it because it just wasn't their thing. That's my point. It doesn't have anything to do with whether or not the movie was good or bad. That's not my point mm-hmm. here. And the yeah. bigger problem here is the kids are confused. They have no idea how to actually have real relationships. And this goes back to the living online mm-hmm. constantly. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and in their films, they're, they're, they're reaching out to Hollywood. They're going like, we want our own stuff. We also want to see what friendships are like. And this might actually go with the whole Ghostbusters thing. And maybe even if there was something there, and this is why they cut that crap out because this study just came out this late last year and, and millennials and zoomers are sick of sex in movies and television. They don't give a fuck who everybody's fucking anymore. They don't care. They just want to see real friends. Why? Because they don't know how to make real friends anymore. That's one of the biggest problems they're having. They don't understand the fundamentals of how to do it because of the internet and the way the media has projected it and how nobody can just be friends anymore. Everybody has to be fucking everybody in some way, shape or form. And the types of friendships, the lines have been blurred so badly for these kids. They yeah. don't know where to begin and where to end with their friendships anymore. And it's, it's becoming a, it's going to become a big, huge mental health issue coming down the road here. I could see it. It's already, it's I'm already so glad a you mental that health up. issue. Yeah. It's already a mental health issue. Why do you think like self care is such a huge thing that like trends online? And it's, it's, uh, I think like, uh, skincare, makeup, and all, all of those places are making so much money right now because self care is so huge because it's already a mental issue. People are are very lonely nowadays. Like uh, millennials, Absolutely. millennials, Gen Zers, they're all very lonely because they don't know how to make relationships. Um, they don't know how to keep relationships. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I feel like it's because you know you have those. Uh, there was like this big push to just live live free and sort of just kind of like offer yourself up to yep. like whoever you know. It's, it's like, like the hookup culture, basically. Group. Yeah. Yeah, they 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 they, they, uh, cur- they curse cur- uh, curiosity. It's no longer don't ask questions and talk to someone different than you. It's you have to fit into this. 
because yep. that's where you belong. You have to self ideas this and only talk to them because everybody else will want to kill you otherwise. Mm -hmm. And it's just yep. not true. Well, and I would love to keep going on this, but we're going to lose uh, Jeremy and Grums here soon. So I want to grab the the super chats for Grums, especially in anything else that came in for Jeremy in the meantime. Chaos Sonic One sends in 10 says, Grums and Tom, thing is the reason why the gaming community is doing better is because they tried to do the exact same thing in 2015. We were the first and we learned from what they did to us in the past. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. We were naive. We, 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 we thought that we, were, that we were arguing in good faith and the other side did not have good faith whatsoever. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we got uh, this one. I think is directed directly towards Grums. Mr. Tickle Trunk says Grums want to thank you for your passion at Blizzard. You shaped the early years of a lot of awkward teenagers who got into being developers themselves. There you oh, go. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, that was a, a very special time in the gaming industry, and I was uh, glad to be a part of it. But yeah, I want to thank Jeremy and uh, you, Grums, for coming on here today. It's a uh, uh, always a fun time to get to talk to you and hear oh, yeah. your insights and. Um, both you guys are um, amazing and thank you for your time for hopping on toxic femininity yeah thank you so much you guys um, but before you go Jeremy especially I know Mark's free to go but Jeremy I need to hear your thoughts on this one I'm dismissed you okay. you're dismissed Mark but Jeremy you're staying well, for a minute just just so everybody knows Mark will be joining us on on the morning show on Wednesday as well so uh, hopefully yep. uh, you guys join us then I'll catch you there excellent all right everyone peace Bye. Bye. Thank you, Mark. So, Jeremy, before you go, yeah, you have to tell me what you think of this casting of the play of Romeo and Juliet starring which, this lovely... Uh, which one's which? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just want to hear your I didn't know Gary that. Coleman was still acting. That is a interesting choice. Um, I haven't seen this. I don't want to be like, you know, just mean and, you know, and say I will. <laughs> she's Sorry. very unattractive. Um Okay, so it is a she. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a she. yeah, it's a she. Um but she's very unattractive. I'm not sure I buy that anyone would end their own life to stay with them. Um <laughs> I hope I I mean good for them. It's going to create they, a lot of content. Maybe they would end their life to be with them. Look, here's the I thing. don't know. Yeah, I guess I don't know. Jeremy, mm -hmm. I will tell you this. I think my my point of view is that men did used to dress up as women. Shakespeare to, days, to, yeah. To do yeah. Shakespeare. So mm -hmm. I think this is this is a callback to those. Let's not forget this is oh. an actual play. Oh, okay. So yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, I wish it was a movie. I wish I it mean, was a movie so I much. I do too. <laughs> I like, wish this was a movie, but this is a play. Um, and also the, the actual cast has also been announced, just so you guys know. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's very, uh, is it colorful? I don't know. I, I don't know what to say about it. We've guaranteed, already done this, though. Guaranteed uh, the Friars trans, just looking at it. I'm sorry, Paris. Oh my God. Paris is trans, guaranteed. Yeah, the... <laughs> um tom's right like we've already whoa that is a lot of forehead <laughs> <laughs> that's five head no 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 down no. to the right the yeah, the yeah. oh my god <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the that's a five head right there yo wow he oh man that looks like what well, um i can't um one of those like um uh, destroy humans aliens or something i don't he know he reminds me of the head from mtv <laughs> yeah that yeah. alien guy where the alien lived in his head or whatever, yeah, oh my yeah. God. The, but they've already like, hey, it's it's Broadway. Um, you know the uh, good. I think Juliet is. Ex I mean, I don't know what Tom Holland is doing with this play. I don't either. I, I don't it, get it. Does he he needs the money though. I don't. I don't no, know. No. So I, yeah, I remember an interview with him. He said that he wanted to go back to theater yeah. because he liked it. And I, I think that he genuinely loves the craft, but like I've so so he did that one skit on one of the late night shows where he he did Rihanna's song, the 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 lip sync battle. And oh, he dressed I love up that. as a woman. Yeah, yeah and I'm like I would have loved this if he was actually playing Juliet. 
Yeah, I mean, they I should have swapped he, yeah, it. Yeah, he's like a stage performer. He is a performer. Yeah, no, he, he's one. really good. Yeah, you know what's yeah. funny is I would easy. actually believe him as the woman more than what's going on over here. They should have just swapped it, and he, she should have played Romeo, and he should have played Juliet. That's like, you know. Just go commit. Just, just commit. commit. Yeah, just if commit you're going to do it. Have fun with it. There are other actors, I think, um... There are other actors who've gone back to Broadway once they're like already super famous. There's something to it. Tom Holland, I think. Um, they didn't the Wolverine actor do that? Um, Hugh Jackman. Hugh I think Jackman. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I think he did that too. I thought he so, started on Broadway. He did, and then he went back. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, as a love interest, big interesting choice there. Um, <laughs> I'm curious if they're going to change the story you... the actual story oh, like the actual story oh, romeo of course and Juliet. romeo's an incompetent male yeah who's uh, because they're, they're they're making it to where the the montagues and the capulets the capulets are black and the montagues are white so i'm wondering if they're going to oh that's really original oh my change god it in that way I that's wonder. even less no, original yeah you know i, I love mean, the maybe, version maybe that... in this version juliet lives and there's a Juneteenth reference. I don't know if you guys knew if you guys are a big um fan of the original Batman movie. So I got I'm gonna say this and jump off. Um mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew this, but you know Danny DeVito played the penguin, right? Mm -hmm. Um there's a picture I just shared of <laughs> the penguin who is in <laughs> fact the actual creator of the trans day of visibility. Day. I I didn't I didn't know that. I just saw it on Twitter. Um it's you know, it's <laughs> pretty damn it's close. a spitting image. Holy yeah. shit. It's yeah. literally that person. I played Gossam like a harp from hell. <laughs> <laughs> we will be visible today. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Okay, well, uh thank thanks you, for Jeremy. having me on. Thank you for coming by, man. Wow. I appreciate you. Good seeing you again, man. <laughs> Wow. Like trends. That is bad. Wow. Wow. Uh, Jeremy's in the quartering, everybody. If you don't follow Thank him, you, you should. Oh and God. especially on Rumble, because that's where he does most of his live streams now and everything. So wow. definitely go to Rumble and subscribe. Obviously on YouTube as well, but give him some all love over on Rumble because that's where everyone's going. Um, so that's basically the show. So let's You're finish good. up these super chats here. I and then share that photo. I've for. seen a different photo. I, I know I've seen, seen a couple. One. I hadn't <laughs> seen that one either. I just that it was the glasses. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. I love Danny DeVito as a penguin. It was I insane. do too. He's the oh, best. I don't care how gross he is. I love I him. Uh, he freaked me out so much when I was little. I loved him. Uh, ono Kai Kala Ono. Thank you. Uh, ono Kai Kala Ono. I think I said that. I think right. you're right. Five for five dollars. Gamers are to go in uh, phases. Next is uh, man. Sorry, I just had to stop because I had like a massive, massive deja vu. It's been like that's weird. I don't know if this ever happened to you before. It's still going. It's so weird. Okay. Next, it's to soften fight uh, fighting scenarios and not cause hate, anger, or vengeance held Everest too but in mario land restrict creativity oh i know it's so sad i'm so sad about the nintendo thing that is ugh. what's going on with nintendo i miss that oh i'm not paying attention dei hiring the dei hiring they're doing like literal dei hiring nintendo so is said, i know i was shocked too it was so bad we showed yeah. it uh let's see actually here it is i can show it to you again because it's still in the private well, chat didn't you work for nintendo back in the yes, day I did. this is really sad i was telling grumps i'm like that really makes me really upset because uh this is not what nintendo used to be like they're they're not they weren't like this so. oh but it says nintendo of america so that that's oh that gives that's me a, hope big at least. Yeah. Yeah. a big difference yeah yeah there. yeah that does yeah, yeah, give yeah. me hope yeah, this is, it, because there is definitely like sections like i work for nintendo of canada so there's Nintendo of yeah. America, but Nintendo yeah, of America. Yeah, this is the headquarters. Like, headquarters. Yeah, sorry. I mean, Nintendo of Japan is the main one, but Nintendo of America the is the, the second choices. main one. Okay, yeah. they're like you know. And that's the thing. Japan is taking over control, and they do not. They don't really mess. I'm surprised they even let this through. 
Exactly. That's, it, I, that's what I'm Black saying. Rock. I'm very shocked. I'm very shocked. Are we seeing savvy? Uh, it's because of BlackRock. They have a, a small oh. holding in, in Nintendo now. They yeah. they have for um, since 2018, I think it was. Fucking BlackRock. I'm so fucking annoyed about it. Uh, go ahead, Stephanie. Uh, hardcore curtsy for five. Trans girl tip, in my opinion. Wear clothes that fit. Don't stuff a bra till your cup size is in the middle of the alphabet. And don't dress for the club at brunch. Um, that's funny. That's a funny. Um, I, think, I think that's a that's just a, a girl tip. Don't dress yeah. for the club at brunch. Yeah, that's a great tip for girls. Um, I will say this. Hold on, Mecca J says Nintendo of Japan probably has nothing to do with this. That's where you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Nothing any of the Nintendo companies do, including Nintendo of America, Nintendo of Canada, any of the Nintendo branches go without the approval of Nintendo of Japan. Nintendo of Japan gives all approvals. And if they do something wrong, Nintendo of Japan will come down on them hard. So they must have known or they must have okayed it because this is, uh, it's you know, they, they probably have been like, whatever, you guys, like America does their own hiring practices. We have nothing to do with it. Maybe. You, do, you know, like that. that's the kind of thing that they would do. I would, the only I thing would I know is ever since the Mario Brothers movie, not the new one, but the original one, Nintendo has never allowed anybody else to have any kind of control over anything ever. Yep. Never. Never. Uh, Kamichi. Kamichi. Thank you for the doll 99. Kamchi, Kamchi, or is it? Kamchi, Kamchi. Kamchi. Yeah. Kamchi. Kamchi. Thank you for a doll 99. Uh, foe, foe to warn game companies, including Pokey on Day. This is going over my head. I think how I think. to warn game. I, I don't think the P is supposed to be there. Oh, okay. How to warn game companies, including Pokey on day. Yeah. Oh, DEI. Po like Pokemon. DEI. Oh, DEI. Oh my God. We need yes, I, I get what you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's all right. We, we translated it. <laughs> we we <laughs> translated it. Thank you so much. I totally yeah, this, get it now. Yeah. That was yeah. Weird. This is a good way to uh, get the company's attention for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Stephanie. Mr. Trickle totally took for five. That. There's enough <laughs> machines out there that are better than AAA studio offerings. Don't eat the slop. Demand better. And play Helldivers too. Yes! Go spread some democracy! Am I going to have to go diving into hell? Because everybody keeps talking about this. Dude, Tom, yes. come, come spread some democracy with us. I'll help you. It'll be Ooh, really fun. Horrible and shit like that. Um, Warrior Justice for $5 says, Part 1, they have... They, they everyone, I met a chick the other day i think he says hey hey everyone i met a chick the other day who told me that she had five kids with five different dudes she then said don't give me that look i'm a snack oh my god uh and then part two <laughs> people have taken a bite apparently. he says warrior of justice for another two he says part two i told her yeah horio she was pissed <laughs> wow thank you warrior of justice for that super chat and imagery um go ahead <laughs> chaos sonic for five tom thank you you hit the nail on the head i don't remember what i didn't hit anybody <laughs> <laughs> wasn't me <laughs> you were saying a lot of good stuff though so yes well done uh mr tickle trunk for five dollars says we have a giant steam uh, libraries of games we've never played gabe his holiness capitalist has uh, a platform where we can avoid triple a and a feast hail uh thank hail. you so much and you're right i agree go ahead stephanie hardcore hard, um, <laughs> hardcore for five so i'm just gonna have there are places i don't doll myself up i wouldn't enter buddhist temple either wearing shoes tact and manners even if it's not perfectly ideal for me Honestly, See, you sound the, like a kind of person I want to hang out with on a daily. It's common basis. sense. It's just common, common sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This I is mean, most, how I grew up. Right. At least most gay people, LGBTQ in the community, if they are somebody who's trans or whatever, yeah. It, back in the day, it used to be, yeah. The rest of the world doesn't have to basically conform to me. Mm -hmm. I have to learn that there's certain times and abilities I can act one way or I can act another, dress a certain way, dress another. Mm -hmm. That's fine. It's just like most gay couples. They didn't want to have to be able to, you know, have sex in public. Nobody's having sex in public. But that's what we've come now. It's like you guys are pushing the envelope so far. And it's not all of the LGBTQ community. And that's what's sad. And I agree with you, Hardcore Curtsy. That's the sad part about this whole thing is 
you guys, the sane people, people with actual common sense are the ones who are suffering for this whole thing. Because back in the nineties, we were raised ex- exactly that way. You know, you do you boo, as long as it's legal, mm-hmm. nobody's going to F with you. Yep. Right. Like, yep. <laughs> yep. Very much. Um, thank you, Richard for the five dollars says horizon uh i think forbidden west will be my last triple a game i love the game uh gameplay but the moment i hit a uh, a cut scene i simply hate aloy in the second game the devs did their jobs man richard i gotta tell you i totally agree with you because i was a huge fan of the first one and i was planning on getting the second one at first then I saw what they did to Alo's face. And I was like, you know what? I'm out. Like, I'm not buying this game. And then I, I heard a lot of people like play it. Like I saw Drinker play it and stuff. And I was like, it's basically game one with a shittier character. So like, no thanks. Um, I'm good. I didn't, I didn't play that. Did you play that, Steph? Or Mm-mm. Savvy, did you guys play uh this one? I I mostly play multiplayer. Like I prefer to to play Ooh, okay. against another human. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, well, we're not playing against humans, but if you're a hell diver, uh, I wish I, I had time. Okay. <laughs> Soon. Soon. Uh, okay. Well, you let me know. You let me know. Uh, Definitely. Warrior of Just- Justice for Two says trans rights are human rights, Batman, Penguin noise. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Tom, read it like the penguin. Tom, can you, can you do that, please? <laughs> trans rights are human rights. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a human. I am a penguin. Oh my god! This <laughs> here. Valiant. Go ahead, Stephanie. Uh, for five dollars. Well, that was fun. That well, was. I came out fun. flapping. Dude, I was watching your stream. You guys did great. You had like three point five k in there at one point. Uh, really rooting for you guys there, Valiant. <laughs> I read the letter. It is so stupid. I so didn't get a chance to actually dumb. see all the scenes, but there are all the streams. But uh, yeah, we did. We read the letter on here too, and Mark commented on it. I mean, it was great. Uh, well, I haven't seen like their response to it though. I gotta go read the response. That's that's gonna be next. Uh, Colonel Sanders for five says Nintendo. Don't let the round eyed devils ruin gaming. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Call, call That's on. one people you have to say yes. Avoid the white <laughs> devil. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, they hired Mickey Mouse. We hired Ron King Coleman. I know this. I mean, it's just a. It's it's wild what they've done. The this this gamer group. What is what is, is Verizon? Uh, her, um. The first one was really good, man. The first one was really, really good. It was a great game. She did not look the way she did in the first one. She was feminine and she was cute. Uh, second game, not so much. No, Valiant, they didn't hire Mickey Mouse. They hired, fu- hired fucking Goofy. <laughs> yeah. hired. Mickey Mouse knows how to word a, a cease and oh. desist because they, they oh. love going after artists. Oh, I need you to stop talking mean about my uh, clients. <laughs> Oh my god. Stop Uh, telling the truth. (laughs) So I was gonna go into this other topic, but we've been here for way too long. Uh so this is gonna have to stay for next week. But uh just a you know, brief briefly to update you guys on what's going on with Lizzo. Uh Lizzo Ah. did claim she's quitting. Claims. (sighs) I quit. I didn't sign up for this shit. You you quite literally did. What's funny is uh the, the response to this that you posted in the DM group, Nina, I literally said this shit the other day. I'm like, she is so full of shit. She's just running scared right now because she's got everybody and everybody suing her. Yep. And the yes. the um the people who were suing her, her came her out basically answer. called bullshit on this. Uh, they're saying, you know, I uh, th- this is a joke. She she continues to blame everyone and basically saying like. She's done this like many, many times. Now, originally, I thought that the quit thing was going to be like kind of like what happened with um, uh, with uh, 
Snoop Dogg when he was like, I'm quitting the herb or whatever. And he's just like, I'm quitting green. We all and, knew better than that. We were like this. I was like, there's no way. But there's all these people that were like, oh, we're so sorry like that you're doing that. It's good for you. And like, I think I called day. it. I said, no, no, no. It's going to be an edible or something. You watch. Yeah. And I was like, there's got to be something. I just, I didn't know what it was going to be, but I was like, it's going to be something. And then he was like, here's like the sm like lack, no smoke fucking barbecue or whatever the fuck it was yeah that's mm -hmm. what it was it's because it, because it, i caught the he's quit smoking yeah like, that was the specific thing that stuck out to me is like oh no 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 yeah. it's gonna have to do something with an edible or something because that's yeah, right no, that's snoop right. dog don't quit that's right <laughs> no so quitter. i figured this is gonna be something <laughs> similar like she's gonna drop a single or like an album that's called i quit and it's gonna be like this is like some type of marketing, like I'm over this shit, but here's I don't my remember who said it, but I think that they're right. I, I don't, I, I don't want to take credit because I did not say this first, but the, the, this is clearly them just trying to Lizzo's trying to get support. Mm -hmm. Right. I think well, she's the other thing too. Yeah. She, um, this is days after going to an exclusive fundraiser with yeah, Biden. That's right. With yeah. Biden. Mm -hmm. That's right. She did. And I rumor has it. Diddy might have a connection oh. there. <laughs> oh, ooh! Well, I mean, it Allegedly. makes sense considering all the stuff that her backup dancers claim. Maybe she's, she's on those different. videos that he's got. I mean, the uh, ooh, yep. food that's for rough. thought. Mm -hmm. Well, sense. all but this and more. For me, oh. it's just Lizzo once again trying to skirt taking accountability for yep. anything. Mm -hmm. Yep, she always does. She's going for a pity party. Yeah. Yep, and all this and more. We have so much to talk about next week. So come back and hang out with us next Monday for yeah. Talks of Femininity. And uh, that's the show. So thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Yeah. So uh, Savvy, thank you for being here. It was awesome having you here. We'd love to have yeah. you back again. Hopefully of course. you can join us. Yes. You're welcome anytime. Um, tell the folks out there where they can find you and what you do. Um, just on Twitter is fine. I'm too lazy for anything else. Uh, mm -hmm. you can find me on Twitter at Madam Savvy and I am a creative consultant. I can do all sorts of artwork. Uh, if you need a ghostwriter as well, I also do that. Um, and I am currently doing all the info dumping on connections with a schizo board, trying to uncover all of the financial public information for all of the gamer gate two stuff. I don't even really wow. like calling it that, but yeah. Well, when you're done, you might have to come back and, uh, you know, tell us all about it and what you find. Oh, there's more. <laughs> Thousands of pages I read. Interesting. Uh, um, too Tired for 10 says, uh, as a video game collector, I've, uh, I have over 600 video games from Atari to PS5 on disc. My retirement plan was to sit back and play my backlog. So I have plenty to keep you busy till game sorts itself out. Gaming sorts itself out. I will hold this line. Good for you. Too tired. Why do you think I got all these movies? Yeah, I know. Look at, I know. Tom's a perfect example of that. That's great. Like, uh, by the way, Tom, you like Godzilla, screen. right, though? Like the new Hell one? yeah, it was a lot I'm of I'm going fun. to see it tomorrow, buddy. I cannot wait. Awesome. I can't wait to see it tomorrow. And did we miss one from Hardcore Kurtz? I feel like I me, I, did we? me and you, Tom, I feel well, like when we, when we like a movie, we like a movie. But we have different tastes. In, in, in oh, and that's fair. <laughs> Uh, well, I have different. Me. I am a fickle that? bastard when it comes to movies, but I'm not. Like it's like people need yeah. to understand. I'm I'm a harsh critic, but I love movies. I know it's weird. It makes no sense, and I sound like Randall the Clerks, but it's so true. Like I will watch some of the crappiest movies in the world sometimes, and it's like, why am yeah. I watching this? But I just keep watching it. But I was just I love so film. hard during Godzilla X Kong. Did we, I, you I got this one. I got that one. I'm just going through them all. Yeah, I don't think we missed one. I saw I, the the sad lack of tact. We got that one. Yeah. We got. I know we read two, two really two. quickly. Maybe that's yeah. Yeah, we read. I read the one and two back to back. Yep, I remember that. Um, it's as far I back as I can go. So. I've seen them all, but yeah. I think we got. I one. really. I don't think we did, but if we did, I apologize. I don't think so, though. Just write it in the chat and and add us if if I miss one. You don't have to pay again, and, I, yeah, and I'll, yeah. I'll read it. Yeah, absolutely. We don't want to miss any, but I don't see any here. I might, but I came in late, so I can't go as far back as you can. So. No, yeah, I, I don't. Unless there was um, something at the beginning, and unfortunately, uh, Andre is the only one who can access the actual mm -hmm. thing to where we can bring them up all at once. So. Or wait, yeah. we should have the, what am I doing here? 
at this. Well, I, ha I have the uh, list one. Fan funding, up, yeah. The fan funding one, and I went through it. And uh, it I only got a... Like... All right. I okay, we well, hopefully we didn't miss anything. Uh, if not, just back up the show and maybe something got lost in the shuffle there. Mm -hmm. But anyway, mm -hmm. Steph, yeah, so did, did you get to plug your stuff? No. Go ahead. Uh, um, you can follow me on Kick and uh, Twitch and then everywhere else, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. So I'll be going live probably later on this evening. Okay. I, I got South Park Snow Day. I kind of want to play it. Ooh. Is this like a new game or what is this? Yeah, yeah it's the new Because they Park had game. one back in the day that was like a snowball fight South Park game. And I heard something about that. I'm like, this is a new game. Okay, I'll yeah, check it's a it new out. one. <laughs> I want to play it. So. Oh, my God. What, right. what, is it, what is it on? Does it, is I, it on I have PC? it on the Switch. I wish. Put a chicken in and make a name and gay. <laughs> if it's on PC, I might play it too because I love South Park. That's funny. Um, okay. My favorite show of ever. Aww. Um, and, and Nina, uh, what do you got going on? Um, Wednesday, breaking the narrative on uh, Rumbles. Uh, I have a new show that I'm doing called Words Are Hard, which is uh, really fun. And I have a couple videos on my channel now uh, where I try to say British words. She uh, said the word on onomatopoeia. <laughs> I watched <laughs> it. <laughs> you did watch it. I watched yes, it. Yes, I did. I, um, yes, I did. Yeah, I, hardcore cutesy in the chat. Uh, we did read that. I actually read that. Super. Cast. Okay. Yeah. So maybe you just happened to miss it. Just back up the stream. But yeah, we actually we agree with you wholeheartedly. And yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, we definitely got our support here. And thank you for being a supporter of the channel. We appreciate it. Definitely. And uh, Friday, you can catch my Infinite Hope show for uh, for turtles and turtle love and. Yeah. All the good things. I like Stephanie, turtles. Stephanie, you're going to have to come hang out soon. We haven't hung out for a minute on. We've got to have a turtle stream one of these days where we do I nothing know. But turtle just, videos. just turtle videos. Oh just tur cute I'll turtle start videos. Them. Yeah, please that do that. That would be awesome. That would be so fun. <laughs> we should do that. We should do it on Rumble, though, so we don't actually get claimed <laughs> for every single <laughs> video. One of the best uh, ones, the turtle video where the alligator's trying to eat him and that turtle's like, nope. Oh my god. Have you ever seen that one? He's just like Yes, I love that video. Yes, I love that video. Oh, here's a funny uh video we can go out on. Here, oh here's one. And you guys can follow me over to Comics Division. I'll probably pop in there. There's a link in the chat. Oh, I might go spread show. some democracy after this too. Oh yes, democracy. Um, this is this was really cute. Hold on, let me pull this up. Because this was adorable. And uh, I just I still don't understand how pandas can like exist in uh, in the wild. They but can't. They I know can't. that's, <laughs> that's so why they they can't. That's why they have. That's why they're in the zoos. I know. You know what? You know what? I changed my mind about about the panda video because I can't find it right now. But it was really cute. Oh, I know but, the one you're talking about. I think too. Yeah, the one with the mom throwing the little. Kid. Yeah, she's like take the steps. Take yeah. the steps. The kid's like it's no. So um but this one i saw and i was like this is this is the a bear family at the beach i saw this too this cute. Oh. Uh, they just got zero f's to give about all the people that's a big mama bear holy shit i know it's a massive mama bear oh, I, the I, just babies love are playing. I know the babies play and they're just like yeah we're at the beach like this is so much fun what you peoples do we're gonna be like peoples <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe those people are just Come standing kids, around, just like at the beach. So I would have slowly oh, made my way yeah. away. Like I wouldn't have ran. Yeah, just like but back away real slowly, as quickly I love slowly how this, as possible. I I just how I love how this bear is like playing with the mom, and the mom like yeah. dunks the bear. Like it's like, dude, mm -hmm. they're literally playing in the water. It's so funny, so funny and cute. <laughs> I love them. I love them so much. Okay, that's it. It's a big, cute. big mama. Holy shit. Big mama bear. She looks like she weighs a lot. Holy cow. <laughs> that would scare me. That's a big bear. Holy cow. But you know like what's so funny is that she did not truck. feel threatened at all. She's just like, oh, would you? Talk about it's like Godzilla. You. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was a, but usually because mama bears are with their cubs, usually they do get like kind of like protective. Yeah. And they tell you, like, stay the fuck away from mama bears. You can tell she's cubs. done that a few times and she's probably. She didn't used care to at all. Yeah. She was like, come get me. You do try and touch my bear cub and I'll freaking. Show People you probably what's feed them and stuff too. That's probably another reason why they're. Yeah, I think so. I think so. But, anyways, that's they're it. like big doggies. I know. <laughs> I want one. <laughs>
What's sad is if you see when shaved, they kind of look like a dog. It's like, okay. Oh, yeah. They're like so cute. I love them so much. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Hopefully, we'll see y'all again soon. Take care of yourselves and each other. Yes, Sadie. I know it's time to go outside. Yes. (laughs) Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. I got to find my button. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Where's the button? I got molested in the little boy's room. Still can't find it. <laughs>